Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have 21 Shore Living Dollar Tree DIYs that I've made so far this year in 2024. A lot of them using the brand new items this year with the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. And I'll try to include chapters below because this is going to be a long one. So these are new, the little glass floats. They're not actually glass, they're made out of plastic which makes it a little bit better. And I'm gonna use three of the turquoise and two of the clear for this. Um, you can use whatever you can find. I kind of wanted two different colors and I wanted an odd number. You could do like three, five, seven, any of that would look really good, I think. So I'm just gonna leave them as is, they are perfect. I have a scrap piece of Dollar Tree rope that I'm gonna use for this project. And I'm going to kind of loop it like this so one end is longer than the other and then just simply tie it on itself there at the top. That can be the hanger and it can have two little ropes hanging down. Now to attach the little fishing floats to the uh, rope, I'm just using Dollar Tree twine. It's going to blend in with the rope and the twine that's already on these. And I can kind of stagger like clear turquoise, you know, like that. Um, two on one side and three on the other. So I just simply tie the twine, um, tying it on um, just about an inch um, down from where I have it knotted off at the top. And then I can put the second one down here towards the bottom. I want to hang them where they're all kind of like staggered, but it also looks like they're all hanging with rope, um, which is why I use the rope for the base. Now for this side, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna go turquoise, clear, turquoise. They also have royal blue for this, if that's kind of more your color scheme, but definitely look for these. I know they are going fast in the stores that I've been in. Um, they're so cute. I did not see these online, I don't think. Um, otherwise, I probably would have ordered a case of them. So I'm just kind of estimating where to tie these off. I'm gonna tie all three and then kind of see how it hangs. I want it to look like a bunch of little glass fishing floats hanging together for my wall. So easy and so cute. So I tied this one towards the bottom, kind of testing it out. It hangs like way lower than the rest of them. So I'm going to move it up a little bit and um, see if that hangs a little bit better. But this cannot be any easier. I have bought as many of these as I possibly can because I think these would make an awesome coastal Christmas tree with um, little ornaments, right? That looks way better. Let me show you how it looks hanging up. So simple, all you need is a little bit of rope and five of the fishing floats to do it exactly the way that I did it but they're all just kind of hanging randomly. The rope, um, it looks like they're all hanging by rope, even though that would be kind of hard to tie them up like that, but the twine worked perfectly for that. And how cute are these? Good job, Dollar Tree, I really love these. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe, and comment your favorite DIY below. Okay, next DIY, we're gonna take some of the Dollar Tree burlap, some of their sand dollars, three of them, and one of the long board signs. You could use really any kind of board sign you could find from the Dollar Tree. Um, again, I wanna work with an odd number on the sand dollars. And so I think three will fit on this size sign well, but the reason you can use anything is because I'm gonna cover it with burlap anyway, but I do like the like light wood frame on that one. So this is just Dollar Tree burlap. I guess you could probably use some of the printed one if you wanted. I kind of wanted simplicity on this project, um, but I'm gonna have to kind of iron it first to um, be able to have a flat piece of burlap because the way they have it rolled up. So I'm just gonna kind of iron this section and cut off what I need to cover the back of that sign. Anytime you do like a burlap with like a white starfish, um, sand dollar, whatever, looks so coastal, it looks so pretty. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off a little bit more than I need. And then I'm gonna measure my sign so I can kind of 
I want it to be like raveled at the edges, like, you know, like real burlap does. So um, I kind of like that. So I'm going to kind of pull off the string there to kind of make it look raveled. And then um, kind of trim it a little bit because it was a little bit uneven for my first side. And I'll show you the trick that I use to cut burlap really easily. Um, this one, I'm just going to be able to kind of trim it. But for the next one, I'm going to pull a strand. So if you lay it on there and kind of figure out where exactly you want to cut, find that individual strand of burlap, grab a hold of it, and just yank it out. Just a great trick for cutting burlap. And ever since I learned this technique, I always do it because then it gives you a little path right there to cut. So just gonna cut all the way up. It's gonna give me a straight line. And that looks really cool. So I'm gonna do the same thing here at the top, just pulling my strand and cutting this off. Now I don't want you to be able to see any glue or anything like that. Um, with the burlap so I'm actually going to use Mod Podge to secure it and so I'm just going to Mod Podge on the back of the sign. This sign's really pretty. I mean you could probably get away without the burlap but you know I like textures <laughs> on my DIYs and this is going to be a great coastal DIY that can go anywhere in my home because you guys know I have every room <laughs> done in coastal because hey I live at the beach why not. Now, um, I just put a nice coat of Mod Podge all over and then just laid the burlap on there. Just going to use a paper towel to kind of um, dry that off. And have you guys seen the new, like, um, you see that little paintbrush that I use, the paint sponge? They have those, like, in little variety packs with all different kinds of paintbrushes now at Dollar Tree. It's new. I've never seen them before, but I think it's a good deal. Now for the hanger, I'm going to want to switch it to vertical. It was horizontal before, and I always save these little hangers off of the Dollar Tree signs when I don't use them, and so that is what I'm going to use. I just find the center. It has a plenty thick frame that I can screw into, no problem, and just trying to get it centered on there so it's going to hang right. But whenever I can use like a real hanger like this, I'm going to try to do it. Just going to make it look a little bit more professional. So I just screwed that into the back, trying to get it in there all the way. And then we can go ahead and decorate this with sand dollars. So we have the great base. These sand dollars are great. They're not real sand dollars. They're like, I don't know if they're made out of what, resin or plastic, but they're great for crafting because they're not gonna break. And um, they actually are not that gray tint this year. So I picked up a whole case of these online. Um, I have my Dollar Tree link in the description below if you'd like to pick up a case. I still think that they're available by the case. I don't know if the starfish are. A few things have been added, a few things deleted, I think. And then I kind of want them evenly spaced out. So this is about 16 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and mark about 8 inches here. And then I was trying to figure out if I wanted to do um, like every 4 inches. Then I thought that wouldn't be too good. So I'm going to do like four and a half inches on both sides and just put a dot there. I think I can kind of do the measurement the other way just by eye. And all I'm going to do is simply hot glue the little sand dollars down. I'm going to start with the center one. I kind of like them with like the long slot there pointing down on these. But how cute is that? I'm going to do the same thing here with the other two. This uh, DIY really doesn't need a lot of fuss. It's just going to be a sand dollar like plank board sign. And I love the skinny signs like this because you can kind of just put this anywhere. My house has like a lot of like skinny walls and areas because it's not like a big house by any means. And this is going to be great. I think I might put this maybe in a bathroom. I think that would look really good. And just gluing those on. So cute. So easy. Just a fun idea you can use these little sand dollars for. Again, I used um, two items from the Dollar Tree, the sand dollars and the sign, plus the burlap. So super inexpensive. It looks really high end. And I just loved crafting coastal again. You guys know this is my jam, so expect 
tons of shore living coastal videos over on in this channel. Isn't that so cute? Okay, for the next DIY, I'm going to use one of their new like charms. These are so pretty. I'm going to use the sea turtle, one of the new Dollar Tree canvases, and then just a plain frame from the Dollar Tree because I want to frame the canvas. I always think they look better like that. And this is such a pretty print. Isn't this so pretty? Somebody posted in our Facebook group. I think they may, might have put mm, a starfish or a sand dollar on this. I can't really remember. And I loved it. So when my store finally got to a living, I was sure to grab some of these. Now it almost fits exactly in that frame. That would be great, but I think it would break the frame to force it in there. So let's just go ahead kind of, instead of like a reverse canvas, we are just gonna have to cut the um, canvas off by using a razor blade. I couldn't find my <laughs> good one, so I'm gonna use this one from the Dollar Tree. And yes, I have a Band-Aid on my finger there. I had a little crafting injury making these. Cut myself with scissors. Darn it. Um, and then I am just going to cut these off. This blade is a little lightweight. So getting the corners where it's kind of like um, doubled up was a little bit tricky. I'm trying to snip it down with scissors if I can. Um, whatever I can do to avoid having to take all those staples out because as you can see, they have it stapled down well. Now, since it almost fit in there, I really only need the front part of the canvas. So I don't really have to worry about cutting it on the sides or anything like that. But I just want to free it. It kind of looks like burlap the color, but it's a canvas and then it has like all the white coral on there. So pretty. So I'm just kind of using the fold line from the canvas as reference of where to cut it down. And then I could always trim it more um, because this is probably going to make it just a little bit too big. But I'm so excited to use that sea turtle there. They have those starfish, sea turtles, sand dollars, and oh, a seashell. And they're so pretty that I ordered a second case of them because I love them. And I that reminds me, it's in my Dollar Tree. I need to go pick it up. So just testing out the size of my canvas um, and just kind of trimming it down to make sure it fits. It doesn't have to be perfect because the wood background on this sign actually is pretty close to the same color as the canvas. So um, I don't think you'll be able to tell if I don't get it cut perfectly. To attach it, I'm going to just simply Mod Podge it down, but I want to do something uh, about the frame first. I don't like the unfinished frame on these signs from the Dollar Tree, so we're going to give it a little makeover with some paint and some stickers. This is the Cloudless Color by Apple Barrel. I get this on Amazon. I have it linked in my Amazon shop below, um, and um, it's also available at Walmart. Perfect beachy color. It's one of my very favorites. I use it all the time. And the great thing about getting it on Amazon is you can still get it for like 50 or so cents and get it free shipping with Prime. So why not? Anytime I can avoid a trip to Walmart, that is going to be the way I'm going to do it. <laughs> so I'm just using a um, little sponge um, from one of those craft kits at Dollar Tree, I think. And I am just painting the frame. I didn't really want to paint the inside of the frame because that actually has like wood on it, but I was getting some on there. So I'm just going to kind of, um, kind of go with it, kind of make it look distressed inside. But what I want to do is try to paint that raw wood. It's kind of hard to paint because since it's that like MDF material, not real wood, it really soaks the paint up. But I usually go for a coastal farmhouse vibe, so I'm not going to want it to look perfect anyway. Um, so I just gonna get it the best that I can and I want to um, texture it. So I thought some of these stickers from the Dollar Tree would be cute and I'm lucky enough to find some that were the exact color that I want, the light blue. But if you can't find the exact color that you want, you could always paint them. I've done that before. I'm gonna line it up so it actually covers the hole for the hanger. So it kind of serves two purposes there. And I'm trying it first just to use the sticker. Um, they're not really strong, the stickers, but I thought I would at least try it first and 
spoiler on the painted surface that's just really not strong enough to keep it on there. Um, some projects like plastic and stuff that I've used these on, it is strong enough the adhesive on these, but for this, um, it's freshly painted too, so that might have something to do with it. So I am going to have to hot glue these down, which I didn't really want to do at first, but you know what? I want it to stay on because this piece turned out absolutely gorgeous. It turned out better than I even expected that it could. It was so pretty. But I love this look. It just takes that frame from the Dollar Tree and makes it look so much more high-end. I even like like the shininess of the blue. So I'm actually going to leave it like that. Uh, if you can't find the blue and you want to do the same project, you could always paint yours blue. I think it would still look pretty. Um, you're just going to have to make sure you do a thin coat of hot glue. My um, Ryobi like shoots out a lot. So you might be able to see the excess hot glue when you paint it. So if you have more of a detail oriented glue gun, I would suggest that so you can get a thinner line there to glue that down. But as you can see, you can just kind of pull these apart, get whatever length you want to customize this. And we are just going to go all the way around. I was really happy that it was able to cover up the hanger on the top of this because instead of a hanging sign, I'm going to make this into a standing sign. Um, I have like little bookcases, I guess, on each side of my TV and I kind of use them as built-ins since I don't have built-ins in this house and I love things like this that can sit on the shelves. It looks so pretty. So just finishing up my last row here, and then we can go ahead and attach the canvas, the turtle, and I even make a stand for this. So this was a little bit more of a time consuming project today. A lot of these were super easy. A couple of them are a little bit more intensive, but you know what? It was worth it because it turned out so pretty. So here is the canvas with all the coral in there. You know, I picked up two of this particular one. There's another variety too, and I might have to see if I can get some more. Um, I think I've got enough Shore Living items, but there's a few items like the Message in the Bottle, the Driftwood Wind Chime, stuff like that that I have not seen yet in the store. And I just put a coat of Mod Podge down and glue the canvas down inside. And you can see how pretty that looks with a frame. And those like square signs like that from the Dollar Tree, one of my favorite sizes because almost all of the Dollar Tree canvases that are so pretty um, are the same size. So great way to frame them out. Here is the turtle. I don't need the wood bead garland or the tassel, but I can save those because they're pretty. So I'm just gonna trim off my turtle. It's like an unfinished ceramic turtle with a beautiful texture. And since it's white, I think I'm gonna leave it white. Um, I do wanna fill in the hole there where it was connected to the wood bead garland. And I just do that with a little spackle, which is the same color, texture, um, as the turtle, so that worked out really well. And I kind of texture it with a little Cricut weeder to kind of give it that dotty feel that the rest of the turtle has, so it's not too obvious that I patched that. Super easy, and then I can just um, dry it. I like it. I really don't think I need to seal it or anything. I think I can use it as is. And I want it to look like the little sea turtle is swimming past the coral, like under the sea. I think that looks really pretty, we're like right about there. So I'm just gonna simply hot glue it as is. I'm not gonna do anything else to it. Um, I can't wait to craft with these things. I love them, they're just the perfect size for crafting. So I'm hot gluing it. I want him to kind of look like he's swimming upward there. And even though it's kind of heavy, I think it will stay in place. I got it glued on there pretty well. Now I told you I wanted to make this a standing sign, so need to figure out a way to do that. I'm thinking just with some Dollar Tree craft wood would be perfect. Really anything that you could find. Um, I want it to be just a tiny bit wider than the canvas, so I'm actually gonna cut mine down just a little bit, but just something heavy duty that's gonna provide a nice space. It's gonna be easy to attach to this wood frame. So I just cut this down, give it a light sanding, 
and I want it to kind of blend in with the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it with the cloudless color um, to make it match. I'm not going to use any of the stickers or anything on it though. I kind of want to leave that um, beautiful jeweled design just for the border. So I'm just going to paint the top and the sides that you can see there um, just to provide a little base. A quick easy way to make like a standing sign and it should be really easy to attach because I can just um, glue the frame like right on top of this. So that would paint pretty well. One coat really is all that's necessary. And so I'm just going to dry that real quick and then we can attach it. Isn't this so pretty? I just love how this turned out. So to secure it, I'm just going to do a bead of hot glue on the bottom of the frame here, stand it up on our craft wood, and make sure it stays in place. And I kind of noticed that the outside of my frame, you know, where um, that like wood kind of soaks up the paint, kind of made it um, not the greatest. So I'm going to kind of touch up the outsides because I think you might be able to see that with just a little bit more paint. But I want to make sure I don't really get any on the stickers as well. So I'm going to kind of just touch up all the way around anywhere that kind of needed it, including like kind of like that inside edge there um, where I didn't really want to paint, but I kind of ended up painting a little bit just to make all of the frame blue. And that made it look a lot better because it was a little rough there for a second. But I think that looks absolutely beautiful. Here is the final product, our little sea turtle swimming through a coral. Here is a close-up image so you can see all of the beautiful details on this. You would never guess this was made with just a few items from the Dollar Tree. It really looks high-end and like something that I bought at a home decor store. Isn't that so pretty? I love that sea turtle. I'm going to be using that lots, I'm sure. Hey guys, if you'd like to connect on social media, I do have a private Facebook group linked below. I would love to have you. I'm also really active on Facebook um, with my page, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And I would love to have you on any and all of those. Now back to the DIYs. A lot of you guys asked me what I was going to do with the new glass beach frames. These are so beautiful. And what I said to you guys was a lantern, perfect for a lantern. They're made out of glass, they have a frame, and I think this turned out so cute. It was so easy. So I chose four of the seahorses. I bought a whole case online. <laughs> um, so that's why I have a lot, but you could always mix it up. Um, there's also a mermaid tail that's vertical. The sea turtle is kind of more horizontal, but I guess you could do it with that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and use all four of these. The seahorse design on these are beautiful. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the twine hanger. I'm not really going to worry about the staple. Um, if I were to remove it, I might damage the frame and it doesn't really interfere with anything. So I'm just going to pull the twine out. The frame on these is made out of like a plastic. I was hoping it would be wood. And so I'm going to use a battery operated candle because I don't know how well it would hold up to a real candle. Then I picked up a piece of the Dollar Tree craft wood. Um, it's just about the right size if you get one of the longer ones like this. The square one might be a little small. And I'm just going to start lining this up how I would set a lantern. One side will be slightly longer than the other for me to be able to form the corner like that. But I'm going to go ahead and start mapping this out, right? I'm going to have it like that. Um, so I'm just going to use an ink pen to kind of mark where I need to cut the board. I'm going to have to go ahead and set up the other side as well. So I can make sure that I get a straight cut when I use my saw to cut this down. And I'm just going to take this over to my saw, cut that down. We're going to have a nice square piece for the bottom. And it's heavy duty just being made out of real wood like that, right? Now, I don't really want it to stand out being just the raw wood like that. The rest of the frames are white. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint that just on top just to kind of make it blend in with the rest of the lantern. But I cannot believe how easy this lantern DIY was. 
definitely the easiest one I've ever made. Um, these little glass beach frames are perfect for this. I'm loving all of the new Shore Living Beach items. There's a few items that I'm sad that they didn't bring back, like the mermaids and stuff like that. Hopefully, um, you guys still have some leftover in your stashes from the last two years. I know I do. Um, but there's a few items that I'm looking for that I have not found yet. But I'm hoping for sure that they come back. So it was like real wood. So I had to do a couple coats of white to kind of make that um, kind of blend in with the perfect white frames that we're going to be attaching to that. But I just want to paint those and get those dry. Now we can start putting it together. It was so easy. This craft wood from the Dollar Tree um, is really thick. So I'm going to be able to use it to just attach it with hot glue. Now you're going to have to be quick on most of this because it sets up rather quickly. And I just glue the bottom of the frame. Um, one side matches, so make sure you get it lined up with the right size that you cut it down to size with. And then I just went ahead and did the other one on the other side, gluing that on with hot glue too, trying to keep like 90 degree angles if I can. Um, but when I attach the side pieces, that's when you will kind of align everything. So kind of the most important part on this one. So I'm just going to lay it on its side like that. I'm going to do hot glue down both sides of the frame and the bottom. This part you have to act really quick. I did not get mine aligned perfectly at the top before it's set up. So make sure you kind of um, get that lined up perfectly because by the time I noticed that mine was off a tiny bit, my hot glue was already set up and I did not want to have to try to destroy everything by taking it back apart. So we're just going to kind of make it work. And um, since you have to work quickly, you're going to have like a little hot glue seeping out, but you know, easy enough to clean up with a little bit of heat and scraping it off um, to kind of give you a more finished look. But again, you are going to have like one side of your lanterns a little bit longer so you can get that perfect corner. But I think it'll work like that. So let's go ahead and do the other side. Um, you can kind of see there where I didn't get it perfectly on the top, but pretty close. So this one, I'm going to be more careful. Um, hot glue down both of my frames. It is plastic, the frames. It didn't seem to melt with my hot glue, so that's good. And then I just lay my fourth panel on there. Isn't that a perfect lantern? I think it's better for a lantern than it is for even hanging. I mean, I guess it would be pretty in front of a window. Um, we'll see what else I do with these. <laughs> and I just lay that one on there. I got this one lined up perfectly, so that's good. That can be the front of my lantern. And just peeling off any excess hot glue that kind of had seeped out at the edges to make it look nice and clean. Could not be any easier. One of the easiest DIYs I've ever made, even though there was a little bit of construction because you do have to cut the bottom piece to size. But look at that. Isn't that so cool? So after I'm getting it all cleaned up, I can just add my candle. I'm using a candle from Walmart just because it's brighter and larger. And it kind of looks like it's real because it's got like the flickering candle and it looks like um, it's made out of like real wax. And here's a little close up of our lantern. This beautiful seahorse and coral design. Pop my candle in there. This would be great for indoors or outdoors. It's nice and large. So I think I'll use this maybe out in my Florida room. This looks so beautiful on my shell table out there and an easy way to light up. This is a timer candle, so I can actually have it automatically come on every night. So that is a plus, but this is how it turned out. My little seahorse lantern. I think it's beautiful. What do you guys think about this DIY? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Now these are new this year, this home sign. Um, it seems that they've switched up the shore living signs every year. The only thing I don't like about them is that they're too skinny. So I'm just going to take a random long sign that I have. I think this is left over from 4th of July last year. And I'm just going to use that to double up the sign to make it thicker. Therefore, it's going to make it better because I don't like the thin bowie signs if I can avoid them. I'm going to go ahead and save the rope detail though. I like that. So I'm just pulling that off the back, trying not to damage anything. And we can thicken this sign up. 
Of course, I want to replace that like shell on there. It's made out of paper. Like it's really bad. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the hanger on this sign and on the other sign. They're almost exactly the same size. So I think this is going to make it work. One thing I did notice was that the holes for the hanger um, were in different places. So that's interesting. So I, um, I think I can solve that pretty quickly by kind of sandwiching the hanger in between. So I'm just gonna use some of the thin twine from the Dollar Tree and tie a knot um, and thread that through. I'm gonna double tie it because it's kind of a thin twine. And a lot of you guys have been asking me where I got my twine keeper. That is Dollar Tree. They're the yarn keepers they have right now. Um, I love them. They work great. They keep my twine um, ready to go and clean on my work desk. So win, win. So as you can see, I'm just going to kind of sandwich that through. I knotted it in the front. It's thin enough that I can kind of hide it between the two signs and sandwich it in there. I'm going to put hot glue on my back sign. Could be any sign, doesn't matter because you're not going to be able to see it. And lay my home sign right on top. That made it the perfect thickness. A lot of the Dollar Tree signs have gotten thicker, but these haven't. So um, I really needed that extra um, depth and it was worth sacrificing a sign for because it made this sign so much better. I love the paint on this. It looks distressed. The color is perfect. I don't think I have to do anything to the home sign except for just removing that terrible shell. <laughs> now to add a decor, we're going to replace it with one of the wall charms. They have these again this year. These are the wood wall charms. I'm just going to carefully remove the hanger from the back and you have a perfect um, shell. It's painted white distressed to make it look like it's made out of kind of like wood or I guess it kind of gives it that natural shell look. These are so great for DIYs. I love these. The shell one is probably my favorite. And I'm just going to put hot glue on the back all the way around and look how much better that looks than that metal um, paper shell that was on there before. So I just kind of glue that in place, trying to clean up any excess hot glue that might have seeped out there. Um, but it's the perfect size for this sign. And this looks so good and it was so easy to do. I thought about framing it out with some Dollar Tree rope and you could totally do that. Um, I thought it looked pretty good on its own though. So I think I'm going to leave it as is because I've kind of corrected the um, thickness of it. I thought about using like the tassel and stuff like that. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to use the rope that came with it. It's long enough to wrap around. They had it stapled on there. I'm not going to take any chances with the staple gun and these thin signs. I'm just going to attach it with hot glue reattaching it to the back here kind of in the same area that it was before like an inch or two down and just hot gluing that on the back I think that's going to provide enough detail but if you wanted to frame yours out with rope on the front I think that would look really cute too or even along the edges it's just going to provide another little texture detail to the sign make it look better but um, doubling up these signs. I think I'm going to do this more often. Definitely the way to go because it really made it so much better. I think it looks great like that. What do you guys think? Here my little home shine with that seashell on there. Really pretty. Um, I think those wood, those wall charms also come in like sailboats and anchors maybe. I don't know. I've got them all. You know I do. <laughs> but this is how it turned out. My little home sign. Super easy. It looks so much better than it did when I brought it home. So I'm really happy with that. Just a fun way that you can DIY this new home sign from the Dollar Tree Shore Living line. Okay, the next DIY, I picked up one of the beach rope signs. I love these. But I thought I could make it even better. So I'm going to use a long sign. This is actually, I think, short living from last year. But it doesn't matter because you're not going to be able to see any of it. I was hoping I could save the starfish pattern on there just by removing this sign that was on top. Because I want to make this a base for my beach to make it a standing beach rope sign. But I was not happy because it ripped it and 
The pattern was actually on the sign. Isn't that kind of weird? I'll save the wish upon a starfish metal sign though, because that's kind of cool. So it doesn't matter which one you use. Any of them would work or any of the Dollar Tree craft wood would work too. You just want something heavy, flat, kind of skinny. I don't like the ripped paper on there particularly well. Um, so I'm going to clean that up a little bit. I'm going to kind of sand it down the best that I can, but half of it was like really stuck on there. So I'm just going to kind of make that the bottom of it. But again, I don't like the way it looks. Um, I want it to have more of a finished bottom. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm just going to take some contact paper. It can be anything. Um, this is just like some wood contact paper from the Dollar Tree. And I am just going to lay my sign on there, use an ink pen, um, sketch that out. As you can see, <laughs> this contact paper has been through it on <laughs> my work desk. Um, but I'm just going to cut that off. And just a big sticker that's going to make the bottom of this look better. And yes, this kind of looks cheap, but you know what? It looks better than that ripped paper on the bottom. So I'm just going to peel and stick that there. And again, doesn't matter what pattern or anything because it's going to be on the bottom, but it did make it look better. I'm just going to use my sanding sponge to get a perfect cut so you won't be able to see any of that in the final product. But I wanted a base so I could stand, stand up the beach sign um, and then kind of decorate it a little bit, make it look a little bit better. I do have this pesky sticker on there though, so I'm going to remove that with just a Dollar Tree putty knife and heat gun, and then we can just paint and decorate this as is. That really didn't leave any residue, so that's good. Um, I, it won't be visible like with the painting and stuff like that. I'm going to use my favorite color by Apple Barrel, again the cloudless color, and we are just going to paint the base of this doesn't have to look perfect or anything because I love that coastal farmhouse distressed look with my blues but I wanted a blue base for this then we can attach the beach the great thing about the beach being on the sign is that it's going to make it stand up really well and just a really fun way to use these signs they also have the word relax home and love with shore living line this year but I wanted beach for this one that's probably the one I've picked up the most of because, of course. <laughs> and um, I've made like rope letters like this before, but if they're already made like this, why not? So I painted the top of it. I'm also going to paint all of the edges and sides of it that blue color. Um, and as you can see, that kind of raw wood kind of soaks it up, but you can make it look a lot better. So I just paint all of the edges. Once I get that looking so much better, then we can attach the beach word. And I also want to add like a little beach item. I'm going to use one of the sand dollars from those little wood beads that you see there from the Dollar Tree. They did bring these back again this year and I love crafting with them. I don't really like the color of the starfish, so I usually paint that one, but the sand dollar is perfect. It's already white and I love those beachy color beads that I can use those for another DIY. As you can see, I did have to use another coat because it really soaked up the wood there, at least on top. But the sides can look a little distressed. I'm fine with that. Now, the rope beach sign has a two hangers on it. I told you I always save these hangers. I've already used one um, earlier, and it is because I can just reuse them. So I don't need them on the sign at all. So I'm just going to use my screwdriver and remove that. It has the perfect wood back to attach it. I'm just going to clean mine up. The rope is a little fuzzy, so we're going to burn off our fuzzies with a lighter. Trying to clean it up a little bit. Um, this step is totally optional, but whenever I work with Dollar Tree, the brown rope especially, I always like to try to burn off the fuzzies. And then we can stand it on the sign. Now, each sign's probably going to be a little bit different. My rope on mine was not cut really well, like um, on the H's and stuff like that. I noticed that it was a lot longer. Um, so I am just kind of touching it up a little bit, making sure everything is glued in place. It is easy to read. And um, then I'm going to trim off some of the excess rope there on the bottom of the beach word to make it look, um, to be able to stand up better. 
it was just kind of a little bit long down here so I just trim up any of those letters just use some heavy duty scissors to kind of saw through that rope and then it will be out of the way you don't want it to like um, kind of go to the side or anything like that I want it to stand straight up so wherever I think it's going to come into contact with the sign I just put a little hot glue there and glue this in place kind of centering it on the sign trying to make sure that I got it on there even and I went over to the left a little bit with my um, sign um, because I want to leave a little bit of room there on the right for that cute little sand dollar so easy peasy it's ready to go all I have to do is cut it off and attach it um, I um, think it looks better over on this side here so I'm just gonna put a little hot glue on the rope and glue that in place it's very lightweight so it's really easy to attach it there um, and it provided the perfect like final touch to this little beach sign I think I did not really care for the edges of it though um, the base so I thought you know some of this burlap trim would be really pretty I'm gonna use the zigzag one I think any of them would look nice I think burlap trim looks so coastal so I use it a lot in my DIYs so I'm going to do a bead of hot glue along the front of the sign and just glue that in place I'm going to wrap this all the way around so all of the base has that burlap trim on it just securing it with hot glue we can have it meet up here in the back just to kind of make it look more finished make it go all the way around even here on the back and these little touches like this can really take a simple DIY like this and just make it look way more high end so just gluing that last piece in place and this DIY is complete it was really easy to make um, but I really love how it turned out I could put this just about anywhere it's not too tall and it's just a simple rope beach word cute little sand dollar on there with a coastal blue base with a burlap trim here is a close-up view so you can see that, that rope did clean up really nicely and it's really easy to read which is good because sometimes those rope words are a little sketchy <laughs> looking if you try to read them really fun I really love how that turned out it was so easy hey guys um, I wanted to let you know that I have memberships here on my channel for four dollars and 99 cents a month you're gonna get early ad free access to my videos and it's just a quick easy way for you to support me here on YouTube you can cancel any time and I would really appreciate it for the next DIY I want to use one of these little wood signs from the Dollar Tree but I wanted to see if I can make it into something so I'm gonna use one of the little wood crates from the Dollar Tree that's about the same size they have these in sea turtle octopus and starfish but I'm gonna be using the seahorse one and they had these last year but they've brought them back again this year I'm just gonna remove the hanger from the back of the sign again not even really gonna worry about the staple I just want to get all the fuzziness off this I thought that'd be a perfect back for like a little mini planter they're kind of small so they're kind of hard to figure out what to do with um, too small for a wall hanging really I think so I'm gonna use my favorite color of cloudless apple barrel here and I'm just using a brush so I can paint the back of the sign get in all of the little holes of the um, seahorse it has lots of details I'm also gonna go ahead and do the frame as well just because I want it all to be one color I can always um, touch everything up and um, later and I'm gonna do white so I don't want like a darker color underneath of it that looks a little bit sketchy so I just go ahead and paint everywhere trying to get it as thin as I can I don't want any of the paint like pooling up around the little cutout because they are definitely a little bit tricky to paint so I'm doing mine with my seahorse but this would be really cute to do with any of the four varieties for sure so we have a nice blue background like that and then I want to do the frame and the little mini planter um, box the little flower box white um, I love the blue and white together I think it looks so classic coastal so I'm just using one of those little sponge daubers from that paintbrush kit that I was telling you about at the Dollar Tree and I'm just painting the frame white 
as you can see, I'm going white over blue. So it does kind of show through a little bit, but that's going to make it look like a distressed white, which I like. I used the same um, stencil dauber, I guess that's what it is, to um, paint the um, seahorse as well, trying to avoid getting it on the blue background that I painted if I could. Um, I just cleaned up any excess with a baby wipe. And I'm also going to paint like the sides of the frame too, because you might be able to see those. We're going to use that same white color to paint the little planter box. They have a couple different varieties of this one. Um, I chose the one that was almost the same width as the sign. I know they have like a little bit of a smaller one now as well. Um, but as close as I could get it, that is the size that I wanted. And it has openings on the side, but for what I'm going to put in there, I'm going to do like a little succulent planner. I don't think it's really going to bother anything. I'm just going to paint the front and the two sides, what you're going to be able to see and like the top edge because you might be able to see that all the way around. But I'm not going to worry about the back or the bottom. I mean, you could paint it if you wanted. <laughs> but I just want it white like that. I think that looks pretty good. And then since I kind of have that distressed with blue look with that white with the blue coming through on the frame, I thought I would just go in and distress it with that same blue cloudless color very lightly just to give it that coastal farmhouse charm. So just a very light dry brush with that. Those Dollar Tree brushes, I go back and forth on those, those chunky brushes, they lose a lot of hair on like the little fibers a lot. <laughs> sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But I found a similar brush on Amazon. I have it linked, I think, in my Amazon shop that seems to keep the little um, paintbrush fibers in there a little bit better. But I'm also going to distress the frame a little bit with that dry brush so it all kind of coordinates well together. Now it's time to put it together. There's not a lot of room to glue onto that um, wood frame. So I'm going to see if I can find a popsicle stick real quick here. Um, I think that's going to be a perfect way to kind of brace that on there and make it look a little bit better. So I'm just going to do a bead of hot glue here on the bottom of the frame, sit that on the crate, lining that up to the back, Put more hot glue on the outside and then just lay my popsicle stick, which look at that, it fits perfectly. I thought I was going to have to trim it down, but it was just the right size to go on the back of it to brace that and make it look a little bit better. Um, definitely um, makes it stronger. And I thought this was a fun way to use one of these little signs. Um, I was kind of at a loss when I bought these last year. I bought them because they were so cute. And then I was like, what am I going to do with these things? <laughs> but the little planter box, definitely a fun idea. Um, for the flowers, I'm going to fill it in with a little bit of floral foam first. Um, I'm going to do a couple of the succulents from the Dollar Tree that I've used one of them in like a previous DIY. So it kind of has the stem off already off of it, but I do want the box to be filled up. So um, I just cut those down to size. Then to cover up the floral moss, I'm just using the, <laughs> to cover up the floral foam, I'm using the floral moss. It's kind of a brown color from the Dollar Tree. I've been having trouble finding the Spanish moss lately. Have you guys seen it in your Dollar Trees lately? I feel like I'm going to have to go over the beach and get me some real Spanish moss, but I might get some bugs that way. <laughs> so this is the blue succulent from the Dollar Tree. I just put that down into the floral foam. And this is another one of the succulents. Um, I've already taken the stem off of it because I've used it on previous DIY. So I'll just glue it on the floral foam by putting a little hot glue down there and just sticking that down in there. Um, I wanted to use like two different colors and... Um, I think they look really cute in there for a little planter box of succulents. So this is how it turned out, my little mini seahorse planter box. Definitely a fun way to use one of those signs. And I'll have to get creative because I have all the other ones too. And they are not all exactly the same size. 
So it's kind of hard to mix them up and make something out of them. They're all slightly different for some reason. Okay, the next DIY, I'm gonna take one of the long wall shelves from the Dollar Tree and a package of the Shore Living Starfish, and I'm gonna make a towel rack. Um, I thought this would be a really fun idea. The starfish are um, not super fragile, so I think this will work for this. I don't need um, any of the hanger for my shelf because I'm gonna make this the plank that I hang on my wall to hang towels. I think I'm gonna use this maybe in my Florida room. I haven't decided. I could use it in my bathroom too um, because I have towels that hang with the hooks, the ones from Target, and I think that would work well. I mean, I you could probably hang any towel. Um, it would work well for like your pool area. I have a hot tub outside, so um, I might use it out there. I'm not sure. I really like how it turned out though. I'm gonna go ahead and paint it with that cloudless blue color for a fun blue base. I'm just gonna leave all the holes open in it. I'm actually gonna use those holes to hang it so I can hang it directly to the wall with screws to make it nice and sturdy and strong to be able to hold up the towels. I'm gonna measure, this um, sign's about 16 inches. So I did about eight inches and then um, five inches out on each side. And then I am going to drill holes. I decided I probably need to center these a little bit better. So I'm gonna make sure that they're centered this way as well. Because once I drill the holes in here, that's where they're gonna have to go. <laughs> but I wanna use a combination of the Dollar Tree starfish and the wood stems to make little kind of like a kind of like a coat rack I guess but it's gonna be like a towel rack. I'm using my power tools. I'm using a drill to drill a hole all the way through these so that I can screw from behind and I'm also gonna screw from the front of the starfish and hopefully end up with a sturdy piece. I wasn't sure if this was gonna work but it actually turned out pretty good. So I got my three holes drilled in that. Now I need to find three of the wood stems. These are from Dollar Tree. Um, I'm just trying to find some skinnier ones um, that wouldn't stand out too much. They're all about the same length. Uh, I really don't think it matters. I'm just trying to find three that are similar, which can be a little challenging. I dump mine all out in these little bins from the Dollar Tree. Um, and kind of like a little scavenger hunt there. And skinnier, definitely better because the starfish aren't that great. So I think this will work. I'm going to go ahead and use that same drill bit to drill a hole in both ends of the wood stems because there's going to be a screw coming from behind to attach it to the sign. And there's also going to be a screw coming from the starfish side that's going to attach the starfish for the front. So basically these are like spacers that's going to kind of push the starfish out and it was the best item from the Dollar Tree that I could think of that would work for this. Now I'm also going to have to drill a hole in the starfish. Um, they are made out of like kind of like a plastic resin material. So be careful. You might need some extras if you get any of yours to break. But I just drill straight through the center of each one of my starfish. I'm going to leave them as is. They're white. They're textured. They're beautiful. Um, so just a lot of drilling there to get us started. I have some like random screws. I don't know if I got these from the Dollar Tree. I don't know. They're kind of in my stash. And I'm just trying to make sure I have some that are going to work. I have some like medium sized ones here. I think these would be great to attach from the back. The sign's not too thick, so um, I just need something that's gonna go all the way through and also go into the wood stem. So I wanna get it just about right, right about there. Put my pre-drilled wood stem on there and it wanted to kind of spin it, so I was using a pair of pliers to kind of hold my wood stem in place. Um, so it doesn't spin around when I'm trying to drill this in. But I, I think I kind of needed the power of my drill to be able to drill further into those little wood stems to make it sturdy. But again, holding them with the pliers seemed to help um, keep that from spinning around. But then I realized that, you know, just a regular screwdriver 
might work a little bit better because I was having a hard time getting it like, you know, all the way in there might be a little bit too much torque with that drill. So I switched to a screwdriver and um, I'm gonna kind of go back and forth. So I'm gonna use this one to get it in there, screw my wood stem on until it is super tight. Again, using my pliers, that helped. And we have that part of this constructed. We have some construction here with the power tools. I try not to use them too much, but for this one, I think I needed them. <laughs> Now for the front, I'm going to choose three of the smaller screws and I'm going to screw this through. Um, I want to be careful with the starfish. I don't want to break them. So I'm just using a screwdriver and screwing that screw through until it goes all the way through and then just screwing that into the wood stem. Now, yes, the screw is visible, but I am going to uh, disguise that. I'll show you how. So we have the first one screwed on there. Be sure not to screw them too tight. Mine cracked a tiny bit there. I filled it in with a little bit of spackle. I think it's fine. And then I'm gonna be more careful trying not to screw the next two as tight. I don't really have like a countersink hole there, nothing fancy here. Um, so the screws do kind of stick up a little bit, but that's fine. So I screw this one through my third starfish and attach that as well. So this is a decorative piece, but it's actually very functional, which I love. It's so cute. I think I might use this in my son's beach themed bathroom. I think it would look really pretty in there. And hopefully he'll hang up his towels when he's home. Now to disguise it, I'm just gonna use spackle. This is an ideal, but it's really the only thing I could think of. I guess you could also use some of the model magic in white. That might work actually a little bit better. Um, but I'm just going to do spackle and I'll just do it in coats because I got to make it kind of thicker. And I just went over all three of the screws, kind of filling in the top part of the screws. But as you can see, you can still kind of see them. So I'm going to have to add more. After I get it dried, I went in with another coat of that spackle and just kind of molding it with my fingers to make it look like it is actually part of the starfish. This is really important for the decorative element of the starfish, I think. And I do that on all three of them, I'm trying to blend it in as much as I can and just following that up with my heat gun. You guys know I've been on a journey with my heat guns. I finally found one that I really like. I'll have to make sure that's linked in my Amazon shop. Um, it does such a good job. Now I, you can still kind of see it. So I went in there with some white paint and I kind of want to distress my starfish with the white as well to kind of make it look like a couple different shades of white. Um, so I just paint over the spackle and I want to kind of seal the spackle on there so it's not like crumbly. I don't want it falling off because I'm gonna have towels brushing up against this. And so I just kind of paint that little area in the middle and distress all of my seahorse to kind of make it all blend in. And they have a great texture on those little starfish, so I love the way that they look. And again, I want to just seal that spackle on there. I was a little worried about the spackle falling off, so I did seal it with paint, but I'm also going to seal it with a little bit of matte Mod Podge just to make sure that it is not going to go anywhere. Cause it looks way better like that, I think. So I'm just gonna kind of seal, I'm gonna seal all the starfish just to make sure that you don't see any difference in sheen between the part that I sealed there in the middle and like the rays of the starfish. And I think that's enough messing with it. I think it turned out really cute. So I'm gonna hang it directly to the wall with the holes that are on there. I don't think it really needs any more decorations. Um, it looks really cute as is. I did go kind of texture my spackle um, with a like cricket weeder to kind of make it look um, pitted like the rest of the starfish. And it was still um, wet enough to be able to do that. And this is how it turned out, my little towel rack. I will show you how I use it. I'm gonna hang it up temporarily for you um, to kind of show it off, um, but in the end, I'm probably going to end up using screws to attach that. 
but here it is. So it has like the little wood stems, perfectly spaces out. Um, I'm trying to think, you could probably also use the little Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree for that if you can't find any of the wood stems. You just need a spacer to kind of push the starfish out a little bit to make it a functional rack. These are the towels that I was talking about that I use for the bathrooms and for the hot tub. They have the little hooks about halfway, so I thought that would be perfect. You can just hook that onto the starfish like that. Nice, functional, shore living DIY. And it actually looks pretty good with my blue towels there, right? And I'm really surprised at how sturdy it actually is. Okay, for the next DIY, we're gonna use one of these. Dollar Tree calls it a sunburst. It kind of looks a little bit like a mushroom coral. It's really pretty though. It comes in all different colors. I don't need a hanger on it because I'm gonna make mine into a candle holder. So I'm just gonna try to take the hanger off without causing too much damage back here. I love the color of this one. It comes in a couple different colors of blue, silver, and gold, I believe. And I like this color. I want my candlestick to be this color, so this one is going to be perfect. So not too much damage. And then this is the candlestick that I'm gonna use. These are new at Dollar Tree. I found mine with like the Mother's Day stuff, like in a little special section. And they had them in a couple different sizes. So I have some spray paint that's sea glass and it is almost the same exact shade of blue that that shell is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spray paint the gold candlestick so it will match and kind of blend into that fun little sunburst wall hanging. I've got a whole bunch of those and I'm trying to figure out what to do with them, um, but this actually worked pretty well. So I'm just gonna do um, a quick paint job on this. It didn't take too much to turn that gold into blue. Just trying to make sure that I got everything covered on that. And I'm also gonna kind of spray paint the back of that where I caused a little damage when I removed the hanger. Easy peasy, now I have to figure out a way to put this all together. You know, um, metal projects are often really hard to glue together. So I'll show you what I came up with to get it to stay together. Hopefully it will be secure. Hot glue and metal doesn't always play nicely together. So I wanted to try something else. So I need something to put in the candlestick. And so I thought one of these little tiny wood cubes from the Dollar Tree would work well. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is attach it to my shell with some E6000. And so I will have to let this part dry on its own to make that nice and sturdy. Now the wood cube itself though, I'm gonna try to glue in the candlestick holder, if that makes sense. So I kinda just need to fill up the well of my candlestick here um, with some hot glue. And then I'm just gonna put the wood cube down inside, hoping and that secures everything. And it seems like it did. Isn't that a really pretty piece? I think it looks really coastal and I thought that the leaves on the candlestick that I chose would kind of look a little bit like seaweed. Now for the candle, um, this is the shore living candle and I don't know, I got this the other day at Dollar Tree but I didn't necessarily see it at any of my other Dollar Trees. So I don't know if it was still left over from last year or what, but you could use whatever candle you have. A pillar would be really nice for this size candle holder. And this has like a really cool like spiral pattern on the outside if you remember it from last year and you can't really see it because it's like white on white, right? So I'm gonna paint mine just a little distressing with some light blue acrylic and a sponge to bring out that cool print. It's kind of like a little bit like an ammonite, like a little ancient sea creature kind of design on there. It's pretty cool and I think this will make it kind of pop on that beautiful candle holder that we just made for it. So I just kind of dragged that over with a sponge, wiping off any excess paint. I don't want it to um, be like super painted. I just kind of want it to be like distressed with the blue bringing out that beautiful pattern on the candle. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the paper off the bottom and put it on there. And I do think it looks like seaweed. I think it looks pretty cool, but I thought maybe I could add a little bit more seaweed to it to uh, um, take up the little seaweed feel of it. So it's got like two leaves going up 
And this is some of the Shore Living Greenery they have this year. This one piece here really looks kind of like coral, like seaweed. So I'm just going to um, cut off a piece of that and attach that to the base of the candlestick too to really make it look cool. So just trying to make sure I get it the right size. I'm just going to hot glue that in place. It is pretty lightweight, so I think it will stay. And I'm just going to hot glue it to the base like that. So it kind of goes up in the front of the candlestick with those other leaves behind it. it. Looks really coastal and cool. So just a dot of hot glue will secure that there. And that's basically all there is to it. This DIY was really fun to do. A little challenging with the metal, but we were able to get it to work. And this is how it turned out. So you can see that cool design on the candle. That sh like shell shape works really well for the base of the candle holder. I think it will catch any wax if I burn it. And the seaweed looks cool too. And I really love that color. I think it's really beautiful and a beachy bluish green color. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, next DIY, they have this new shore living fabric this year with sea turtles all over it. They also have fusible interfacing at Dollar Tree now, which is a new product. And I thought, you know what? My Cricut will cut fabric, but will only cut bonded fabric. So we're gonna give it a go using a couple pieces of that turtle fabric and make a fun DIY for my house. So. What I wanna do is make the shape as big as I can um, with my Cricut, 12 by 12 is basically what I'm gonna be limited to. And I don't have a fabric mat, so I'm gonna use my strong grip mat and hope for the best. <laughs> so I'm just gonna cut the sea turtle fabric down into that like 12 by 12 size. What I wanna do is make a really cute coastal pillow for my house, a no-so, a no-so version. And um, I thought we could make a really fun little applique out of this sea turtle fabric. And so I'm gonna need both packages of this to kind of get the size that I want. So I'm gonna use my first 12 by 12 square as a template to cut down my second. And then I am going to put the interfacing on the back and see if my Cricut can cut it out. It is an experiment. And I've never done it before, so I was a little intimidated, but I'm gonna take you through all of the steps. The first thing I'm gonna do is just iron the little squares since they're rolled up and bended and stuff like that to make it a little bit easier to work with and make the final product a little better. This is the interfacing. It's not like a paper-backed one where you peel the paper off the back, which confused me um, a little bit, <laughs> but, what you're gonna do is just cut it down to size. So what I'm gonna do is use that for reference. I have it doubled up there, so I'm cutting out two pieces, one for each one, and then um, I'm going to iron that on. It said on the package to um, put the rough side down against the underside of your fabric. So I have my fabric upside down, and I put the rough side down, and I'm gonna lay that on top. I wasn't sure um, if that would melt onto my pressing mat, so I did give it a quick trim to try to cut off any overlapping material. And uh, then I'm just gonna use my Cricut Easy Press. You could always use an iron. It said to use an iron on high, which I looked up and they said that was about 300 degrees. So I'm just gonna set my Cricut Easy Press to 300 degrees, and it said 10 to 15 seconds. I wanna make sure that it is definitely attached. So I did mine for 15 seconds. And um, it says just to do one section at a time and then overlap. So um, I'm gonna have to do it in like four presses for my size of Cricut Easy Press here. Just moving that around and pressing it. And it seemed to adhere to the fabric really well. So uh, fingers crossed this, this is gonna work. <laughs> This was me like making sure there's no paper on there and it makes your fabric nice and stiff, makes it really easy to craft with. I think this could have lots of uses. When I was at Dollar Tree um, today, I picked up more of that because I could see a use for that definitely in 
um, DIYs, especially when you're crafting with fabric. So we're gonna do the same thing here with our second piece, rough side down, 300 degrees for 15 seconds, and I'm gonna do that for each section. Now, I was reading whether you could just use, so I have a Cricut Explore Air 2, and it has a fine cut blade, and what I found online was that would work, um, but you probably want to use like a separate one for that. So I'm going to use my strong grip mat and put my fabric on there, um, interface down to cut it out. And um, the Cricut Explore Air 2 has a setting for bonded fabric. And so that's what we're going to use to try to cut this out. Now, I had never changed the blade in my Cricut, and I've had this for years, and so it cuts, but it could have cut better, and I think if I would have had a newer blade, which um, I'm going to now for sure, it would have cut better. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to start peeling it up carefully here. I just want to peel the background off. What I did was cut it out in the shape of a sea turtle. I used just a ready-made silhouette of a sea turtle that was on Cricut. I'll be sure to include a link to that below. Nothing crazy. I just tried to find the simplest sea turtle cutout I could find um, to cut this out. And as you can see, it cut. The only areas I had trouble with were like um, in the corners around the flippers and stuff like that. It didn't cut 100% but it cut about 99%, enough that I was pretty happy with it. It didn't fray too bad or anything. So I'm gonna carefully um, remove this from the mat, trying to not mess up the interfacing that was on there, and trim up any loose threads that I might see, because I wanna attach this turtle to my pillow. And I wanna do front and back of a pillow, so that is why we're doing two. So. I'm going to do the same thing here with our second set of fabric that we put the interfacing on. I'm going to take this to my Cricut and cut it. I don't know if I should, could have changed the settings to make it cut better um, or because I the you can't really do like the depth of cutting when you have it set to bonded fabric, but I tried sharpening mine with a little aluminum foil and Actually, I think it worked better before I did that, so that trick might not work too well. Because <laughs> this one was cut a little bit worse, but we're still going to make it work. Really, um, I just kept pulling it up. If I found an area where it was still attached, I just trimmed like that little piece. It was still easier than cutting this out for sure. So I just ordered a new... Um, cutting blade for my Cricut. I'll have to try this again. I'm sure it does dull the blade though. So the, the recommendation is to have a separate blade for fabric. So I think it worked. I think it was a success. They turned out pretty good. And I thought that the sea turtle shape would be really cute on the sea turtle fabric. And I can just attach this to a plain pillow and make it look a lot better. So again, just trimming it up. The pillow that I picked up was super cheap. It was just like a $5 pillow at Dollar General. Dollar Tree Plus probably has something similar too. And I'm going to use a special Mod Podge called Fabric Mod Podge on this. I actually picked this up on Amazon. I think I have it in my Amazon shop below. But it's supposed to be used for fabric and it's supposed to be permanent. Like you can even like wash it. It's going to stay on. So that's what we're going to try to do with this sea turtle. Now it's like a really thick Mod Podge, as you can see, it's almost like a paste. So what I'm gonna do is spread that all over the bottom of my sea turtle and get that ready to apply to my pillow. I'm trying to get it as even um, a coverage as I can because I wanna make sure every area of the fabric is stuck to the pillow. So I just do a nice, healthy coat all the way around. And I wanna take that and put that on the pillow. The pillow is just like an ivory color. So it kinda of goes with anything, but you could do this on any color pillow and make the pillow look so much better. I'm gonna do mine at an angle, like it's swimming up di diagonally across the pillow like that. So I get it where I want it and I just smooth it down. I did notice, you know, since it's not a flat surface, 
um, that I'm attaching it to. It's already got the stuffing in there and stuff like that. That it, I felt like it was kind of pulling away on the edges a little bit and it could have more Mod Podge there. So what I did was just use a little paintbrush and some Mod Podge and I went around and anywhere where there was like a little bit of gap between the sea turtle and the fabric, I just touched it up, made sure that I had really good coverage. So definitely focus on your edges for this because you're not gonna want it to peel up. It's kind of a two-step process according to the bottle of the Fabric Mod Podge. It says to put it on like this and then it says to let it sit for two hours and then um, seal it on top. So that's what we're gonna do. I got one side all on, everything's glued down really well. We're gonna flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna have it like kind of swimming up just like we did that one. So again, I'm just gonna coat it with the Fabric Mod Podge here on the back, trying to get as much on there as I can. I was a little worried um, about doing the next coat because it said to do a thin coat on top and it's so thick, this Fabric Mod Podge, but I'll show you um, how I actually got that to work pretty well. So um, that looks good. It is covered with the Mod Podge and then we can lay that on the pillow and glue this one on as well. I'm gonna do it the same direction, kind of make it a mirror image of the other side of the pillow and make sure it's all flat and adhered to the pillow. And I still, even though I really kind of went heavy with that Mod Podge, I still felt like I needed to do the edges. So again, just with a smaller paintbrush, I go around and touch up all the edges, making sure everything is glued down. And then a little bit of patience is in order because it says to let it sit and dry for two hours and so I'm gonna do that. Um, I actually did that while I um, ran some errands so it kind of worked out pretty well and um, it dried pretty good. There were a few areas where I thought maybe it could have been a little bit closer that I was worried about peeling but the sealing coat really um, took away my worries. It made it so much better and it looks very much permanent now. So I've let it dry for two hours and this was my trick. I got this little Mod Podge brush on Amazon. I really liked it. I'll be sure to include that in my Amazon shop. And it's a special brush for Mod Podge to get even strokes. So I thought it'd be great for trying to get even coat of this on it. And it went on so much better. You can see it goes on thinly with that brush and it's really easy to hold in your hands. I actually really liked it. And so I just go over the entire turtle that we cut out and go over it with that thin coat. And then I go in and um, give it a quick dry with my heat gun just so I can flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Just again, making sure that there is no gaps. I don't want any peeling and I want this to stay on there forever. <laughs> so we will see how it holds up. This is the first time, well, I think I've used this once before on my channel, but I haven't really used it in an application like this, the Fabric Mod Podge. I did have trouble finding it. I couldn't find it in any stores that I shop at, so I did have to get that on Amazon, but it's a pretty cool product, and I love Mod Podge of any kind. <laughs> I always try to get whatever I can and it, because it's so easy to craft with. So again, on the back, I just did a thin coat of the Mod Podge all the way around, and that's all there is to it. We have a really cute little sea turtle pillow. I absolutely love how it turned out, just so colorful on that white pillow, and it just made it look so coastal and fun. And the fact that it is made out of the sea turtle fabric, I think that's really cute. The shape is really adorable. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to try to use one of the new word decor pieces for the Shore Living line this year. They have several different ones. My little sea turtle has a boo-boo, but that's okay. I think I can probably fix him. I'm not actually gonna use him for this project. I just want the letters. It's gonna spell out the word ocean. I was a little curious how they had the O and the A outlined, 
but not the other letters. So that was kind of odd. It comes with string, um, double-sided tape, and of course the little sea creatures. Um, but I'm just going to use the letters. I'm going to combine those with one of these long, plain wood signs from the Dollar Tree. The only thing is it's a little too thin for what I need it to be, so I'm going to use two of them. Double it up to my, make a nice thick sign, and then just use a long board sign from the Dollar Tree. doesn't matter which one. I had a leftover Day of the Dead one, I think, from last year, but I like the fact that it had blue sides, and so I actually think that I picked those up on clearance. Now, let's go ahead and prepare the letters first. Again, I wasn't a big fan of the fact that the O and the A are outlined and the rest of them aren't. <laughs> so I'm going to try to fix that by adding outlines to the C, E, and N with just a fine tipped Sharpie. It's a little intimidating and the wood kind of soaked in my Sharpie a little bit. But this is just going to be kind of a background effect because we are going to paint these. And I think that this will still kind of um, shine through the paint and be a little bit of an outline and just to make it make sense. Like the O you could have always flipped over and not had the outlining, but the A kind of needs the outlining because it has like that center part of the A. So I just sketched them out and they look a lot more uniform now. And since it says the word ocean, I want to paint them to look like the ocean. So I'm going to flip them over, line them up on the bottom, and then I'm just going to tape all the letters together with just some painter's tape just to make it easier to paint these. I'm going to paint them all together as one. So once I get them taped, I'm going to flip that over and then I'm just going to start looking for my blues. I wanted like a blue for the sky and a couple shades of blue for the ocean. I'm using Caribbean um, by Apple Barrel, Caribbean Blue by Delta, and I think it's Blue Cotton by Apple Barrel. And I'm gonna mix them together too. You just need different shades of blue to do the ocean and it's so easy to do. So I started the sky with this light blue that kind of reminds me of the sky. And as you can see, I'm just using one of those chunky brushes from the Dollar Tree and I drag it all the way across. Then I switch to the more like teal color for your horizon line. Switch to the lighter blues to do like ocean. And you want like different shades of blue as you're looking out at the ocean. So I kind of mixed a couple of my blues together and finished off the bottom of that. You really can't mess this up and you can always add to it um, and fix any mistakes that you might make. But since it's an abstract ocean scene, it's really hard to mess up. I gave it a quick dry and then tried to fix my horizon line a little bit. It was a little off. And then add like a little bit variations in blue on the top of the ocean to give it a little bit of depth effect. And I always like to add a little bit of white too, like for little white caps or waves out in the ocean. Just a very light dry brush of like a little wave here and there. Again, just to give it a little bit of dimension and make it look like the ocean. So I do that across all of them. If you get a little bit too much on there, I accidentally put some in my sky. <laughs> you can clean it up with a baby wipe. So that looks pretty good. I don't want to do like the beach part. I just want to do the ocean because that is what the letters say. So I'm going to go ahead and peel these all off. And we're going to make a really cute ocean like standing sign for decor using those other signs I got from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to kind of clean up the edges of these for any paint that might have bled over. Um, so I have nice clean letter shapes and I'm so excited to use these. I also have one that says beach and one that says welcome, I believe in those. They're so cute and they're brand new this year with Shore Living at Dollar Tree. Now to cover the sign, I have a scrap piece of Dollar Tree burlap that I want to cover it with. So I need to cut it down to size. Um, I'm going to pull a strand where I need to cut it. It'll provide a clean little path there in the burlap for me to cut and get a nice straight line for the bottom part of my sign. And then just using um, the sign as reference, I can cut it down even more. Just kind of even it up the top a little bit there. 
Um, I had this leftover from a, another Shore Living DIY, I believe, and I want to give it a quick iron too, just to make it a little bit easier to work with. And so I get my mat out. I also want to make sure that I got it cut to size. It looks like I can trim it up a little bit and I just kind of peel the strings and trim it until it is perfect. And again, I'm only pressing it just to make it look better, make it easier to glue down. So just a quick iron over it. I've also like starched this before if you do need a little bit um, to be able to work with it and cut it more. But I think that this will be fine. I don't think we'll have to worry about any fraying or anything like that besides that little piece that wanted to come off for me. Now I wanna double up this sign to make it thick enough so that we can make a standing sign out of it and these Dollar Tree signs are a little thin. So I'm just going to put hot glue here on the back sign, kind of all over and set my new sign on top that we're gonna cover with the burlap and it just gave me a really nice thick flat sign. The holes in it aren't too large. I just sand in mine, put a little bit of sawdust inside of them to try to um, fill those up, but I don't think that they'll be too noticeable with the burlap on them. To attach the burlap, we're just using regular Mod Podge, a nice thick coat all over the sign. And I thought the burlap would be a really cute background for those ocean letters painted like the ocean. So once I have that on there, I'm just gonna go ahead and lay the burlap right on top and glue it down. It went on really well and I think I have it sized pretty well. I'm just gonna trim off any excess that might be sticking out and I want the bottom to be um, pretty cleaned up so that it won't like um, stick out from when I attach it to the base of the sign. But that looks pretty good so we can start with the letters. They fit perfectly on this size sign. I'm not sure if they would fit on the frame Dollar Tree sign. I think this sign might be a little bit bigger, but you could always use whatever you could find. I'm gonna start with the center letter to try to um, center it, but since it's kind of a snug fit, it's pretty easy to hot glue these all on and get pretty good spacing. I just wanna make sure that I don't overlap the bottom again since I am gonna have a base on this sign and try to keep all of my letters fairly even spaced. For the A there, there, the only thing that was bothering me about the A is that that center part of the A is not cut out. And I do end up fixing that here in just a little bit and I'll show you what I ended up doing with that and I think it worked out pretty good. Now for the burlap that doesn't have anything on it, I thought we could put some little sea creatures on it. So I get these little teeny tiny um, starfish from Amazon. Um, I have these linked in my Amazon shop. They're so cute. And then I like to use the little tiny starfish that come in the bottles at Dollar Tree. I know a lot of you guys have been hunting for those. I've been hunting for them too. Um, I don't know where they are right now, <laughs> but I love those things and I always buy them. So I hope they get them back in stock soon. My um, stores, I went to two Dollar Trees today and they both just got like new sea glass in. So hopefully soon, but I'm just scattering little tiny seashells and little tiny starfish all over and kind of making the burlap kind of represent the sand part of the sign, right? So I like that, I think that looks pretty good. I'm even gonna put one here in the middle of the O, why not? And you know, they cut out the middle of the O, they could have cut out the middle of the A, I don't know why they didn't. <laughs> And the starfish are uh, real starfish, so they are a little fragile, so be careful with those. You don't wanna push on those too hard for sure, but I think that looks pretty cute and it provided another little beachy touch to the sign. Now for the base, I'm just gonna flip it over and use the back of it for the top of my sign. All I have to do is get rid of these pesky stickers. Heat gun, the heat gun works really well for this and a little putty knife from the Dollar Tree to get that all scraped off. I like the fact that they had blue sides all the way around. So that part's already kind of done for me. And I'm gonna distress the top of it to look like driftwood. But what I'm gonna do first is glue the ocean sign on first because I don't wanna glue to the paint. I wanna glue to the actual sign if I can. 
And I thought that that would make it a little bit sturdier because I'm going to have like the ocean sign standing on top of that base. So to attach it, I'm just going to do a bead of hot glue along the base of those two signs that we put together. And glue this down right kind of in the middle, maybe a little bit more towards the front. Just standing straight up. And those signs, those long signs, board signs like that from the Dollar Tree are very heavy duty. They work great for a base. And I really didn't like the fact that the A didn't have an opening. So I used a little scrap piece of that burlap that we used on the back and cut out a little um, tiny triangle that we're just going to Mod Podge on. And I'm glad I did it because it makes it make more sense. Um, having the burlap and it just adds a little bit more texture to the letters as well. So super cute. I just put that where that cutout would be and glue that down. I was a little worried that it would fray on me, but I coated it with Mod Podge pretty well. So it all stayed together. Now for the base part, it's that unfinished wood, right? I'm going to use this color. Um, I think it's called Beachcombers Beige from Apple Barrel. And I'm just distressing. I'm leaving some of that original darker color to show through to kind of give it that driftwood vibe. I also distressed the blue a little bit to kind of make it all to go together. And it's all going to look very coastal farmhouse. I went ahead and did the back too, even though you're not really going to be able to see back there, but why not? I'm not going to do anything on the back of the wood sign though. I'm just going to leave that plain wood. But this is how it turned out, our little ocean sign. So... A really fun DIY to use these new ocean and like beach letters with. I'm really excited that they added these to the Shore Living line this year. Um, letters like this can be really expensive. So to get all of these plus like the little sea creatures too for $1.25 is a really good deal. And whenever I'm at a craft store and try to get the letters, they never have the letters that I need for the word I want to make. Now, the next DIY, we're going to use one of the new Shore Living signs. This is the welcome sign, and I thought this would be perfect for a coastal wreath, right? So, I'm going to do a very simple wreath. It's one of my favorite ways to do a wreath. I'm going to start with a large wreath form from the Dollar Tree. This is the big one. This is 18 inches, really great size for your front door. And I'm just going to do a simple burlap wreath with where they're rolled burlap from Dollar Tree. This is my favorite way to do a coastal wreath because it's so easy. I really like the look of weaving the Dollar Tree rope in and out and in and out. But it takes a lot of rope and it takes a lot of time. So I'm going to show you how easy it is just to do a burlap wreath. As you can see, I'm just going to glue it to the back and I am overlapping. I pull it tight because I don't want it to be frumpy or anything like that, but I just keep overlapping every piece. And the fact that I'm kind of overlapping all of it makes it nice and thick. You can not really see that dark wire through it um, that you would be worried about with burlap. It does a pretty good job of coverage. So this was a new roll of that burlap. And it makes it mm, three quarters the way around. So I'm going to make sure that my seam's on the back. So I just cut it down a little bit, grab a second roll of the burlap, and I'm just going to glue the two pieces of burlap together to continue that wrapping process. So that was really easy, just hot gluing those together. And I love this rolled burlap from the Dollar Tree. Whenever I see this, I grab a ton of it because it is so good for coastal crafting. And as you can see, it's just the perfect width for doing something like this. So I just keep wrapping and tightening until I get all the way around. Kind of overlap maybe once here at the end. And again, cut the seam here on the back and attach it with hot glue. And I'm going to think I'm going to make that like the top of the wreath to kind of make it make more sense. But looks pretty good so far. The burlap makes a great backdrop. And the welcome sign is plenty big to go from side to side. I was trying to decide if I wanted it to hang or if I wanted to attach it. I decided to attach mine. So I just took the hanger off the back of the sign because I'm not going to need that. Now I want to use that. I also want to use some of the Shore Living shapes. They have some of these cute little wooden sea turtles. 
and we can scatter some of those around. Um, the sign itself has little wood fish on it, and so I thought other coastal creatures would be cute too. These are the little clothespins that are the seahorses, so I thought I would grab some of those as well. Removing them from the clothespins proves to be a little tricky. <laughs> But that looks pretty good, so we can start painting this stuff now. The welcome sign is kind of cool, but I don't like the dark blue. That doesn't really go with my coastal vibes. So I'm going to just change the color of that part. This is the color Cloudless by Apple Barrel. It's my absolute favorite beachy color. It's a very light blue. And I'm just using a tiny little paintbrush from the Dollar Tree to make sure that I kind of stay where I want and not get too much paint on anything else, but you can always use a baby wipe to get it off if you notice your mistake soon enough. And I'm doing it on the C, on the M, and on the W. And it's just gonna change kind of the color scheme of the sign. And I'm glad that I did this because that's like more of my favorite color. I don't mind the other color of blue, but I just don't use this shade of blue very much with my coastal decor. It looks almost more nautical to me and I want it to be a little bit beachier. So again, just trying to avoid everything. The fish is just right out of the way, so that worked out well. But as you can see, since I'm doing such a light blue over a darker blue, it's gonna require a couple coats to get good coverage. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Just going over that a couple more times. It does kind of soak into the wood a little bit. So it goes on with a little bit better coverage than it ends up looking, but I just painted it, dried it, painted it, dried it. And then I also, I think I needed a third coat on that. And I also wanted to paint like at least one of the little fish on there blue as well. Um, to kind of match the sign a little bit better. I like the little ship wheel with like that teal color that's on it. So I'm gonna do this little fishy blue and then just touch up the rest of these letters and I'm also going to be painting the little sea turtles and seahorses that we're going to add on it and I even add some starfish as well so these are the little sea turtles they're so cute I'm going to do them in that cloudless blue color too to kind of coordinate with the welcome sign that we just made that color so it doesn't take much paint on these for sure I'm just going to go over the top of all four of them and then I picked out three of the seahorses, um, the ones that were like the natural wood color to paint as well. Um, they're a little tricky to get off and um, make sure you have backup plans if you're planning on to using these. Because either they come off super easy like that, I didn't have to do anything to it, just popped right off, right? And then, or they break. So. When I do have success, I kind of take the clothes pin apart like that and then use as much heat as I can to get the glue loose and try to pry that off. But you have to be so careful because the tail wants to break, the mouth wants to break. I don't know why they're so glued on so well. <laughs> if you couldn't see the clothes pin on the tail of the seahorse, I would have honestly just left them on there. I was able to get the second one, but the third one totally broke on me. Um, so I thought I needed a few more sea creatures. And so I decided to add some of the starfish that are the clothespins as well. Uh, they are a little bit easier to separate and I had a little bit more luck with them. So we've already painted the sea turtles blue. So I thought we would paint the rest of them white. So you can see how easy the little starfish ones want to come apart for me. Pliers work great for peeling the little clothespin off the back. And so I'm going to paint the two seahorses that survived and two of the starfish white. Uh, the, star, the seahorse is painted really well. I did notice painting the starfish, the little open dots on there um block really easily with the paint so what i did was just go over mine with a um, toothpick to kind of open those up a little bit but i just wanted blue and white like the blue fish and the white fish that we already have on the welcome sign 
something that's going to kind of contrast against the burlap that we use to wrap the wreath with because we're going to decorate all around with the fun little sea creatures and I've got another fun coastal DIY as well to kind of tie it all together. Now while I still have the white paint though I'm going to do a little light dry brush with that over like the blues and stuff that I painted on here um, just to kind of give it that coastal farmhouse vibe. I really like that. And if you get too much on, you can always wipe it off with a baby wipe. So that's what we're going to do. Anything that has like color on there, just distressing that with a little bit of white. And since I'm distressing those, I'm going to go ahead and distress the little blue sea turtles as well to kind of make it that same, that same vibe. Now let's start putting this together. The first thing I'm going to do is attach the welcome sign. I kind of looked on the W and the E to see where I needed to put my glue. Added hot glue to those and I'm just going to glue that directly to the burlap. Um, making sure that is good and attached. I want to use this wreath on my front door and I think it's going to be so beachy and fun. Now once I have that on there I want to um, add the sea creatures. I am going to add like a fishing net material as well. I'm just going to go ahead and alternate colors kind of lay these out to see how many I want to do on the top and how many I want to do on the bottom. And it's kind of hard to get these all in one shot, but I ended up doing three on the top and five on the bottom. And this is what we're using for a fishing net. This is that mesh ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a couple different colors. This is the ivory color. I thought that would look really cute against the burlap and make it look like a fishing net wrapped around. Um, just to make it a little less plain with just the burlap wreath. So I start here on the side and just glue that to start with. And I wanted to do this after I added the welcome sign because I'm actually going to wrap the netting around that sign as well. To give it that cool vibe. I don't want it too tight but I don't really want it like gaping out. So I'm going to wrap it around just like some of the letters there like part of the E. And then using that same roll, just keep kind of alternating that around. So you still see a lot of burlap, but you see a lot of this too, which really does kind of look like fishing net. And so I think it's just a really easy way to get that look um, with like a smaller pattern netting. I, I like to use market pantry bags for a small kind of fishing net too. And I've been picking some of those up recently at the Target Dollar Spot. So that's another option you could use. And then we can start laying out where we're going to put all the sea creatures. And you can see that, that really just added a little pizzazz to the wreath. I like it. And I'm just going to start hot gluing everything on. Easy peasy. I just hot glue um, on the back of the wood shape and lay it on, sometimes overlapping the netting. Just trying to keep everything spaced out a little bit. And I really love all the little sea creatures all the way around. If you don't have any of the sea creatures, you could also do like seashells as well. But I think this turned out so cute. And I think it coordinates really well with that new welcome sign from the Dollar Tree. I think it's so cute. This is the final result of the little welcome wreath. The word is perfect for the front door. Lots of little coastal touches on there. And I'm glad I changed the color up on the sign. It uh, is much more me. <laughs> and that light blue color but I think it turned out really nice what do you guys think about this DIY hey guys have you visited my new website yet craftybeach.net brand new website I've launched here for my channel when you visit what you're gonna find is a blog every entry is a different DIY video from me so if you click on the video what you're going to find is a photo of each one of the DIYs that we made in that video that, that you can then pin on Pinterest so you can remember to make it. If you scroll down, you can find the instructional video from me to figure out exactly how to make it. I'm going to have everything kind of organized by season. Right now, I just kind of have Easter, Spring, Coastal. I also have a link to my Amazon shop with all the items I recommend on Amazon and even a link to my Etsy store for all my fun crafting meme and watercolor printables for you. So there it is, craftybeach.net. Be sure to check it out. Brand new website. 
trying to get this up and going and I'm really excited about it. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to see if I could take some of the bamboo rings, a planter from the Dollar Tree, and make a fun little coastal planter DIY. So I picked up this navy color. I thought this would look really nice with some of this new coral fabric. This is from the Shore Living line as well. And it's more of a royal blue with like light blue coral on it. So I thought we could kind of make this correspond. So I popped the bottom of it off because um, I'm only going to do the top part of it. But what I want to do is do a fabric covered pot. And then I also want to see if we can make a fun Dollar Tree DIY plant stands with those bamboo rings. So I picked up this pot because I thought it would fit nicely in the smaller ring of the bamboo rings. And I just wrapped that fabric around. It looks like it's going to be plenty big enough to go all the way around. So what I'm going to do is just wrap it tight since it's kind of an odd shape, right? And just start cutting it off um, where I'll have excess fabric on the top and the bottom. And then I can always trim it down to size. I thought this would be the best way because, you know, the bottom of the pot is skinnier than the top of the pot. So it's definitely going to be a little bit of a weird shape here to keep it tight against the pot. So that looks pretty good. And to attach it, we're just going to use a Mod Podge. So I just start with like one section at a time and we're going to cover it with Mod Podge and start attaching the fabric, wrapping it all the way around. Uh, I wasn't sure how it would work on this like line textured plastic pot, but it actually um, worked pretty well. It was pretty easy to do. So I'm just going to do like the center section here. Nice coat and lay that down kind of like in the center part of the fabric that we cut down to size. And then we can just keep adding glue and wrapping the fabric around. So once I have that in place, I did this side of it, wrapped the fabric tight and made sure I had enough Mod Podge down to do like the entire piece. And then we can wrap that around and slightly overlap that to finish it off. I do want like my cut for the back of my pot to be kind of straight. So trying to cut that at like a little bit of a straighter angle there. Um, so it kind of makes sense for like a single line seam there on the back. And then I'm just gonna use more Mod Podge to glue the fabric to itself slightly overlapping right here in the back. Just making sure there's no bubbles, everything's laying down smooth. It went on super easy. And then I'm just going to cut along the top part of the pot any of the excess fabric off. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I do have an idea to kind of cover up my loose seams on this um, to make sure I don't have any like odd cuts or fraying or anything like that. So I get a cut as close to the plastic as I can all the way around the top part of the pot. On the bottom, I was wondering if I could like leave it and fold it down inside, but I ended up just going ahead and cutting it off like I did with the top. A little trickier to get in there, but again, just trying to cut it as close to the pot as I can. I wanna be able to pop back on the bottom part of the pot. Um, and since the colors match together, I think it'll still match well that like navy color with this beautiful coral fabric. I wasn't sure about this DIY. I was kind of winging it on the plant stand and stuff like that, but I actually really love how it turned out. Pretty cute. So again, I just pop the bottom back on, trying to make sure I don't have any strings, any crazy fraying on that, and that it's all glued down really well. Let's just go ahead and remove the sticker here from the bottom of it. I was trying to decide if I was going to make it like a hanging plant stand or a standing one. I ended up doing a standing one um, to just to kind of raise it up and make a little plant stand for this pot. Really fun to do. And I want to trim it out with some burlap. So this is the burlap trim from the Dollar Tree. I thought this would be perfect for that top seam. And I'm going to kind of um, hot glue it on there with a tiny bit of an overlap over the top to kind of give, this is like kind of a curvier one. They come in these like multi-packs of like different um, shapes and sizes, but I really like them because I 
The burlap really looks really great with all kind of coastal crafting. So I just go all the way around and I just have my seam be right there with the fabric seam on the back. Now for the bottom part, I'm gonna switch it up to a different design, a little bit smaller, same package, um, and do like the zigzag burlap trim just to do the seam along the bottom. And I don't really want it to interfere with that bottom section. I just want, kind of want it to make the seam look better here. So again, I start on that seam there on the back and just hot glue that trim all the way around. It's just going to finish everything off. No, no unraveling or crazy cuts or anything like that exposed. Just makes it look a little bit more professional and finished. I think that looks pretty good. Now, I'm not going to do a real plant on this. I'm actually going to DIY like a faux plant because your girl does not have a green thumb. I think it's the fact that my house doesn't have great windows. It's an older home, and uh, my last house here in Florida had great windows for plants. This one just doesn't, and so I keep most of my plants outside, but I wanted to do a cute little planter for inside. So... These are the bamboo rings I'm going to use to make the stand. They come in a two pack with a larger and a smaller one. I end up using the two smaller ring pieces. As you can see, that fits really well for that size pot. It goes about half the way up. And so I'm going to kind of DIY one. So these are little bamboo sticks that I actually got on Amazon. They should be linked in my Amazon shop. But you could also use the wood dowels from Dollar Tree. I like these just because they're flat. And I'm just going to use my miter scissors to simply cut these down to size. I'm going to need three pieces all about the same size. And I just kind of estimated um, how big I wanted it to be. And that's going to be my side pieces to hold the planter up. Since I'm doing a... Um, DIY like not a real plant it's not going to be super heavy so I think that the stand will be definitely sturdy enough I just do a bead of hot glue there on the bamboo stick stick it on the bamboo ring from the Dollar Tree just like that and I'm gonna do like one every third of the way around so if I turn that around I can kind of see where I need to space out the other two that way it's not too busy. I think that's gonna be plenty of structure on this little plant stand. So again, just a little dot of hot glue on the bottom, gluing that bamboo to that. And I, these work really well together. I've made like a coastal toilet paper holder for one of my coastal bathrooms using these bamboo sticks, the full length. And it turned out great. Um, I've done it a couple of years ago and it is still working well. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here on the top. I do a bead of hot glue on the inside of each one of them. I'm gonna flip it over. That way I can kind of use my work desk as leverage there to glue that on to the other wooden ring. So just a really simple little plant stand, but I thought it was a fun little DIY to do. And the bamboo always looks nice and coastal. So now that that's complete, I'm going to leave it as is. I love the bamboo color of that wood. And we can start DIYing our little faux plant. And I'll show you exactly how I did that. I just popped in a couple of the little foam blocks from the Dollar Tree. And this is the greenery that I found at Dollar Tree today. I think it's so pretty. It looks like a tiny, like, um, Monstera-like leaf. A really cute little pattern. And I just cut individual leaves for the first couple rounds to make it lower and not too tall. And I'm just gonna kind of go around the edges, just kind of like pushing those down between the different foam pieces all the way around. And I don't really want you to be able to see inside the pot, but I am gonna kind of cover that foam and stuff in case you can see in there a little bit. Wanted to see how much coverage. These are kind of a plasticky leaf. Um, but they did still kind of iron pretty well with my heat gun when they were going um, bent or anything like that. So one package kind of went all the way around the edges. I'm going to go in with some floral moss while I can still kind of get to the foam. This is the Dollar Tree brown floral moss. 
and it, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to put a little on top of the foam, a little on the top, on the sides, um, nothing crazy. I just want um, none of the foam to be visible and it to look like it has like almost like a soil color there as a base. I'm going to cut apart the second bunch too. I'm going to use a total of three bunches of these to make a nice size plant to look like a really beautiful little house plant that I don't have to take care of. <laughs> so as you can see, it's filling out really nicely. Since I cut those all down to size, all of those leaves are like a nice shorter. And I'm going to leave the last bundle together. It is too tall though. So I'm going to try to shorten that the best that I can. For some reason, the wires in these were like super strong here at the base. So I tried with my pliers um, to kind of break those off and I didn't have a lot of luck. So I actually just kind of bent them up um, the wires because I couldn't get them to cut. But that's okay. And I just put the middle section down. That provided a nice height for the little house plant and just kind of arrange it a little bit. Actually turned out pretty cute. Looks like a little faux house plant. And I don't know if the plant stand would be strong enough if you filled it up with potting soil. I guess you could always try it. Or you could just DIY the pot like I did with the really fun coastal fabrics from the Shore Living line. This is how mine turned out. I think it turned out pretty cute. My little fake plant. I love that coral print. I think that's so beautiful. Lots of blues and it coordinates nice with that navy pot. And my little DIY plant stand that I tried to invent. <laughs> it actually worked out pretty well. Just another fun creative way to use some shore living items for some home decor. Okay, the next DIY, we're gonna try to DIY one of the brand new seahorse signs from the Dollar Tree. And it has like a like exoskeleton kind of structure on top. I'm going to use that sign and a long framed sign from the Dollar Tree that was horizontal, but I just removed the hanger on the back to make it a vertical sign. Now I have a fun idea for what to fill all the different parts of the seahorse with, but I want the top part of the seahorse to be blue, a beachy blue. So I'm using that cloudless color by Apple Barrel again. And I'm just using one of those little uh, sponge dauber, uh, like stencil sponges from the Dollar Tree. Because um, I don't want to do too much painting. I just want to do the top part. I also don't want any like paint pooled up anywhere. So just trying to clean that up as I go with a smaller paintbrush. But it's just the raw wood. Really easy to paint. One coat is definitely enough on that to get good coverage. Now my idea for what to fill the different sections of the seahorse with on this one is sand. I thought I could kind of do a two-toned seahorse, like a blue and white seahorse. So I'm going to use some of the white sand from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to put down something because it can get a little messy. And to glue it on, I like to use just plain school glue. I always get this on clearance back to school season for like 20 cent, 29 cents at Target. And I am just going to fill all the different sections with glue and then put the sand inside. So there's like this little like earish section here, the eye as well. Just kind of spreading out the glue flat so that I can add the sand to it. And I haven't been able to find the tan sand at my Dollar Trees lately. I tend to always have that problem this time of year when I really want it. I've been finding a ton of the white though, so might have to make do with some white. And then I'm going to do this section of the seahorse as well. Just kind of filling in each little section there with a little bit of glue. Spreading it out so it's not too thick in any one area. And that I get sand glued everywhere. And I'm just sprinkling the sand in. Trying not to get it to like attach to the blue part of the seahorse if I can. So I just kind of push it in with my finger, try to clean up what was on the blue parts. And then I'm going to do the same thing here for the back side of the seahorse. 
And I like this, it's fun, but it's a little bit more challenging than the flatter ones that they've had in recent years. But I do like the attention to detail, all the texture on there. I know I did a DIY last year. One of you guys wanted a more realistic one and I tried to make this exoskeleton pattern out of hot glue. It actually turned out pretty good though. And then these sections are a little small here on this fin, but we're gonna commit to putting the white sand everywhere. So again, I just add a little school glue and push some white sand down in there as well. Now, whenever I do sand to a project, especially like a sign like this, that's gonna hang on the wall, I always like to glue the sand from the bottom, but also glue it from the top. And if I need to add like a little bit more for like the areas that might have like a bald spot, I can do that without having to make a mess because the school glue part of it is kind of done. You're really gonna need like a spray glue at this point. So that looks pretty good. The spray glue that I'm gonna use is from the crafter section at Dollar Tree. It's this one, just a little aerosol spray glue. Can be a little tricky to find this sometimes. And I'm just gonna kind of spray all over, gluing it from the top. I don't necessarily want the glue on the blue parts that I have there. So I'm just using a baby wipe, trying to clean that up a little bit. Cause I wanna make sure that I don't get sand stuck to those parts. I just kinda wanna keep it inside. I also had another idea. I picked up several of these seahorse signs cause they're so cute this year. And I'm also thinking about maybe making one of these with resin. One of you guys did it with one of the, um, one of the nautical cutout signs. Um, and you posted it on Facebook and it turned out really cool. They did like different colors of resin for like the windows. So I was thinking that might work for the seahorse as well. Might have to try that out. I did get another case of Dollar Tree resin that we'll have to play around with. I forgot to fill the hole in the top of the seahorse. So I just went in there with a little bit of spackle um, just to kind of disguise that, put a little blue paint over that as well gonna finish that up because I don't need to hang it because I'm gonna actually attach it to that long wood sign from the Dollar Tree. Now it has like a great coastal frame on it but the wood on it was a little darker than I wanted. So again I'm using that Beach Combers Beige from Apple Barrel. I picked that up. I think I actually got that one at Walmart. A lot of times I get Apple Barrel paint on Amazon though. I try to have a lot of shades linked in my Amazon shop because you can get them on Prime and it saves you a trip to the store and they're super inexpensive as well. So I'm just distressing. I'm leaving a little bit of that dark wood shining through to kind of keep like the wood grain going through, but I just kind of want it to look like a rough driftwood color and that color is perfect for that. Now, since I um, have that dark wood in the background, I don't really need to distress it with anything else, um, but I did go over it with a little bit more of the Beachcomber Beige, just to brighten it up a little bit more. And I think that looks pretty good. Now for the back, I need to make a new hanger because it was horizontal before. So I'm just gonna do the same thing with some Dollar Tree twine and tie little knots. And it's got that thick frame on there so I can use my staple gun and just staple that to the sides making a cute little hanger here that you won't be able to see. And every time I do a video, you guys wanna know where I got my twine holder. I got it at Dollar Tree. It is a yarn holder, they're new. And I picked up an extra one the other day. Maybe we'll have to have a giveaway soon and I can give it away to one of you guys. Now this is the seahorse, as you can see, it's a really nice size for the sign. Gives me a little bit of room on the top and bottom to add a bit more decor though. And so I was thinking about adding some of the short living greenery um, that kind of looks like, you know, seaweed, things that a little seahorse would um, be attached to, to kind of decorate the bottom part of the sign. I thought that'd be a fun touch. I thought these little pieces here were perfect. They were on the pick that has the seahorse on them. So definitely fitting. I can have like some go behind the seahorse and some go in front. So. The middle section I start with, I'm gonna do behind, and I'm just gonna do a little bit of hot glue there at the bottom to glue that into place. 
then the seahorse can go on top like that. So let's go ahead and attach it. It overlaps with the frame on its like um, snout, its tail, and its fin. So I put hot glue in those three areas and it kind of gives it a 3D effect where I can put like a little bit of greenery um, behind it and in front of it. It's gonna provide a lot of fun textures here. And you can even have some go under and some go over, kind of like that. I'm just going to kind of make that work with hot glue and make it look like a little seaweed forest down here. A little bit smaller scale than the seahorse, but that's okay. I don't know why that piece doesn't really look like it belongs. I'm going to trim that off and this piece looks really cool. So we're going to add that one on top as well. Now, since I'm hot gluing those all to the bottom, it does look a little rough down there with the bottom of those plastic like plants. So I want to kind of disguise that a little bit and add a, like a little decorative touch to it as well. So I'm going to use some of this thicker twine. This is the rolled twine that you get at Walmart. It's a little thicker than the Dollar Tree twine and I thought that it was kind of necessary for this one. So again, I'm just going to use my staple gun right here on the frame. And I'm going to wrap that around like three times to kind of make it look wrapped, but it also disguises the bottom part of the plants there and makes it look a little bit more finished. And it definitely looks coastal. It looks like rope. And that looks really cool. So I'm going to do the same thing here on the front. Just stapling that to the frame and wrapping it around three times and finishing that off as well. I've already made the hanger for the back. So that's basically the last step in this little seahorse DIY. He turned out really cute. Whenever I can layer Dollar Tree signs like this, I like them a lot better. It just makes them look nice and thick. And with the frame on this one, it adds a lot of um, depth to it as well. But lots of fun touches with the driftwood colors, the blues, the white sand filling in the different sections of the seahorse. We have the little seaweed here at the bottom and some rope hiding the bottom of those. I think it turned out really cute. I had a lot of fun putting this one together. Now up next, these are new this year. They are the metal fish instead of the wood ones. And they also have the starburst, which I think looks a little bit like mushroom coral. So I wanted to find a way to DIY with these. So I'm choosing a blue and a silver fish and like the like turquoise color of the starburst. For the frame of the DIY, I'm going to use the five gallon paint stir sticks. These come from Walmart. They're like a couple dollars for a package of three and they're great wood and a nice large size because I want to make a giant frame and I want to make like wire art with these um, using some wire from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to need a stir stick for the both sides and the top and the bottom. I do want it to be kind of like a rectangle and I want it to kind of look like under the sea, like coral fish swimming through. So I'm just kind of measuring. Um, I want to cut the handle off the top piece and to cut the end off because it was a little damaged there until I get it about the size I want it. I do want it to be super long though. Here, let me turn it so you can see it a little bit better. Um, I want to make it as long as I can. So they do have those little handles on them like that. And so I can kind of overlap that area where the handles start without a problem because you won't be able to see those. So I will cut those to that length and then I'll cut the bottom one shorter too. So I'm just cutting off part of the handle on these, trying to extend the length as much as I can. And then I'm gonna just go cut the last size and it's just a matter of putting this together. It's a great wood really for crafting. Um, I think it looks great for coastal, just the raw wood like this. So I'm going to leave it like that. I just use some hot glue here in the corner to get us started. And I'm going to find like my square from the Dollar Tree just to kind of help me try to get this square because sometimes it is a little hard to see um, if you're getting it square before your hot glue dries. So I put some hot glue on this side. I'm overlapping the top and the bottom pieces. Um, and the side pieces will be down below and using my square for reference, that does really kind of help. Okay, so the bottom piece here, I do need to kind of cover that handle part, which is no problem. Um, I just need to make sure I get it square again. So I'm just going to do one corner at a time. 
I use Gorilla Glue hot glue. It works really well. Um, you could use wood glue if you wanted, but I wanted to get lots of DIYs done for you guys, so we're going to use hot glue on this. Now, I didn't necessarily want to hot glue the metal because I know that doesn't work well. So I thought a really good idea would be to use wire. They all have hangers on the back of them. And I thought, you know, I could just kind of wire them to make them look like the corals in the back. We got fish swimming through, make it look like an underwater scene. I thought that would be really cute. For the wire, I was trying to think of wire that would be durable enough from the Dollar Tree. And I chose some of this, the jute uh, covered. It's like, you know, um, a combination between the jute twine, but it's wrapped around a wire. And it's actually pretty strong. So I thought I could just run some of those along the back. Kind of make them look like, kind of like seaweed kind of. And actually have them be functional to do like a wire art. I know like you can get a lot of wire under the sea art. And um, it involves like soldering and all that kind of stuff. But I don't really have those tools. So we're going to work with what we have. I just used my staple gun. I'm um, trying to make sure <laughs> that I didn't go all the way through the wood. The paint stir sticks are not super thick. Um, so I was trying to be a little bit careful for that. I'm going to cut this piece off a little bit longer than I need. And I just used the existing hanger there on the back of that blue fish. And what I'm going to do is actually just kind of wrap the twine around it and loop it. That's going to like hang it, kind of suspend this in space inside the frame. So I'm trying to get that as tight as I can because I need the length of that to go all the way to the bottom, stretching it out. It was a little tricky getting this one, but once you get it, it's kind of in there and it worked pretty well to um, spend it this way. You don't have to be straight up and down with your wire. You can kind of, I'm kind of going out or more towards the center and I'm going to staple that down. Now I didn't know if the staples would high, um, like would hold the jute covered wire in place or not. You might want to double it up a little bit. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and double it up here at the top just to make it a little thicker. That's gonna help me not get my staples all the way through that. Um, paint stir stick too. I'm going to cut off another length of this. You have to be kind of careful working with this because it does like to come off the wire. So I'm trying not to work with it too much, like the very end of it. And here I'm going to do the same thing. I go through the hanger on the back of that little starburst shape. They have the fish in all different colors. They have these little, um, corals in all different colors too. And then I'm just going to go down and do the same thing with the silver fish. I want that one kind of hanging below that one. And just using the same wire, I just loop it through just like I did on the other one, trying to get it as tight as I can. And that will hold it in place. And hopefully once I get everything in here, um, I'll be able to kind of arrange the fish and everything and make sure that they're hanging right. I'm going to cut the length on this one. Um, a little bit longer so that I can kind of curl the wire around just kind of make sure that that stays in place and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here on the other one that I already did just to make sure those are nice and strong because those are going to be hanging those little items up all by themselves. One more staple to make sure that's secure. And then um, I don't want that to look out of place so I'm actually going to add some more of the jute wire. Um, just to kind of look like decor, kind of seaweed, kind of stretching across the frame and stuff too, um, to give it a little bit more character. So again, I'm just kind of folding it up. I found it worked a little bit better like that and easier to get with your staple gun. And I'm going to start over on the corner and kind of go over here where the starburst is. I'm going to double that up and this is just going to be a decorative piece of the wire, but I'm glad that I did that because it made like the other pieces not stand out as much and then for my last one i'm going to kind of start here where this one ends and kind of like make it go kind of diagonally across too, all the way kind of over to the corner again if i can curl it before i staple it i found that that worked the best that looks pretty good i think that's enough wire to get us started um I want to decorate it some more and make it look like an underwater scene. But as you can see, it's already looking pretty cute. My vision is coming into reality here. 
And I was trying to decide how I wanted to decorate. Um, I did have a staple go all the way through the bottom there. So I do want to kind of do something on the bottom to kind of cover that up. But I kind of had a plan for that anyway. These are new this year. Um, they're called Willows. Well, I don't know if they've had these before. I know they've had the glitter corals before, but these are not glittery. They have these in all different colors, but I really love this light blue color. And so I'm just cutting one sprig of that, cutting it in individual pieces, and to make it look like coral here on the bottom. We can have these like coming out from the bottom of the frame. So I just flip it back over and we can start scattering these around. I was trying to decide what was the best way to attach these hot glue or um, staples and it ended up in the end that it was be better to do both <laughs> the hot glue like kind of keeps it in place but so does the staple I think they kind of work together because these are just going to be kind of standing alone I want it to be nice and strong and I'm just scattering these around anywhere where I think needs one I'm going to do one right here by this fish this is when I switched to the stapler. I thought that that worked, but when I started messing around with it a little bit, um, I found the ones that had the hot glue and the staples um, were more secure. So I went ahead and did that with all of them. I wasn't sure about this fifth piece. I'm going to try it here in the middle. I just cut it a little bit shorter. I didn't know if it'd be too much, but I had it. So I thought we could try it. So I staple all of those in place. And I think that looks really cool. I thought about mixing up some more colors in there with that coral, but I thought that was really pretty that that kind of matches that coral um, there on the top. I call it a coral because I think it looks like a coral. And that's kind of what we're going for on this little ocean scene. Now, I told you I wanted to cover up the bottom because I did have a staple come through, a couple of staples just on that side. And I have some driftwood from the beach, so I thought that would be fun to attach there. Um, at the bottom and it would look good too with all the coral coming out of it so I'm just gonna take it and this one's pretty perfect length I'm gonna hot glue that down it's kind of weird and weathered and jagged and I kind of like it like that so I just hot glued it down like the two points that it needed to be and um, it's not really gonna um, need to support anything so I didn't like screw it in or anything like that I just attached it with hot glue now for the hanger, I'm just going to use a hanger I had left over from another Dollar Tree item and just kind of try to center this on the back. You might need to play around with this a little bit to get it to hang right depending on the weight of the metal pieces in your frame. I'm just going to use kind of a combination of hot glue and staples on this because um, I didn't really want the screws to go all the way through the um, um, paint stir stick. And so I did some hot glue for a little depth and then I did staples and it seemed to work. And it's just going to make it um, a little bit easier to hang. Otherwise, you could just use the frame to hang it. Now, just seeing how everything is going to kind of play together, what I like, what I don't like. I didn't like the fact that my driftwood was not big enough to like cut cover the complete frame here so I thought I would put a second piece of driftwood in here just to kind of fill out that bottom part it'd be cute if you had enough of that to go all the way around the whole frame I don't think I really do so I have this piece that's a little long I'm just going to break it off a little bit with some pliers just to kind of make it a little bit shorter and you want it to be all kind of crazy and jagged anyway and I chose like kind of a different color of driftwood just to give it a little bit more variety. So just trimming both ends, just trimming it by trimming it with a pair of pliers. That way it kind of breaks off and looks jagged. And I'm gonna hot glue that one right next to the other one. And that provided a little bit more character down there for our driftwood. And I really love how this is coming together. I think it's really fun. I was trying to decide if I had like too much coral going on um not enough and i decided i didn't really want that piece in the middle i thought it was a little crowded there so i'm just going to go ahead and remove that one and leave everything else in place but as you can see the ones that i stapled um were kind of moving around so that's why i was saying hot glue and staple is the best way to attach those if you're going to recreate this diy 
I had so much fun putting this one together today. I think it turned out really pretty. So I let that set up to make it super strong. And the only thing left that I wanted to do was to try to distress these a little bit. They do have like a texture, a little bit of a texture, but I don't want too much of a distress. So I'm just using like uh, antique parchment, like ivory color, one of those chunky brushes from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just kind of like daubing it all over. I didn't want too much. I just kind of wanted a little bit of distressing on those pieces that stuck up. And it kind of has like a rust distressing anyway. So I kind of went to those areas and kind of tried to distress those a little bit more with ivory than with the rust color. Just to kind of brighten them up, but still make them look weathered. Um, that coastal farmhouse feel. If you get too much on there, you can always wipe it off. I found that using a dry paper towel worked the best because I didn't want to remove too much. But I just wanted to make sure that nothing was too heavy. So I do that with both of the fish. And then I also do it with the starburst shape. Just kind of going around in a spiral, dabbing it all over with that brush and kind of trying to get it even. But again, just a very slight distress. And I'm glad that I did it because it really gave the metal pieces a lot more character. And I think this turned out so fun. What do you guys think about this one? Let me give you a closer look. I went ahead and hung it in my house. This is in my entryway. I think it has so much character with the corals and the fish. You got like the seaweed. You got um, your driftwood there at the bottom. Really fun. Um, just some items from the Dollar Tree, some paint stir sticks from Walmart, and some driftwood from the beach. Hey guys, if you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more DIYs. Okay, the next DIY is going to be easy. The first one was kind of intricate, so we're going to go easy on this one. You're going to need a starfish from the Shore Living Line. One of these frames. Check these out. These are actually wood. I couldn't believe it. They're really pretty, and I think they look great for coastal. This is an 8x10, and I also picked up one of the 8x10 burlap canvases from the Dollar Tree. I love those things. Now, my hope is that the wood frame is going to be way sturdier than the plastic one that I've tried to do this with before. And the good news was that it was. Look at this. You can pull out the staples. No plastic breaking. Actually really sturdy. And the opening was actually large enough for the 8x10 canvas. I was so excited. These look so coastal as is covered with a burlap. Really saves you a lot of steps. Um, and I like the fact that you can see through it. So testing it out for size. This was my first one. And look at that. If it's perfect, it doesn't like break the corners or anything. I'm going to have to totally stock up on these frames. I really love them. They also have them in a 5 by 7 size. And I think a 4 by 6 maybe. So I just put a bead of hot glue along the inside just to make sure that the burlap doesn't fall out. Securing that in place. And you have that wood frame. And the burlap. And I thought one of these little starfish would be so cute on it. I chose the blue one because I thought that would add a little bit of color. I'm going to actually leave the rope on it. Just cutting it off to make it look like it's hanging like from the frame. Instead of trying to remove that. Because I kind of like that detail. And then we're just going to simply hot glue the starfish to the burlap. I just put hot glue on all of the rays and behind the rope there and center that in place, pushing it down, making sure it is good and attached on the burlap. Now for the top part, um, to make that look like it's nice and straight and hanging, I'm going to secure that with hot glue as well. And if you wanted to make yours like a standing sign, you could always glue the back of the frame onto the back um, of the canvas really easily. I'm going to make mine a hanging sign though, but I wanted to add a little bit more color to the frame. Now this is new twine they have with the Shore Living line. It's the brown and the blue. And I thought this might bring in a little bit of color to the frame because it's kind of like a brown on brown with the burlap and the wood. And then I was like, you know, it is a little too thin, but I could probably make a thin rope out of it. So that's what we're going to try to do. I just cut three pieces longer than what I needed for the side. And I am just going to braid a simple DIY rope with this. And it actually turned out pretty cute. I'm going to start with just a dot of hot glue and take all three pieces, hot gluing that right there at the corner. 
And to braid your own rope, it's super easy. You want like one straight like that. And then you wrap the other two around it. So I just keep holding that one twine straight, just wrapping the other two around it. It doesn't have to be super tight. I just want a thin rope with a little bit of color here for the frame. And that worked out pretty well. It's just about the right scale I need. When I get to the corner here, I just put another dot of hot glue to glue that in place. And then I can cut off the length on the twine and we can start on the other sides. And I'm really glad that I added this. It adds like, you know, another texture with the rope, which is coastal, but just adding that little bit of blue really helped. Um, Cause I didn't want to paint the frame cause it's so pretty. So let's do the other side the same way. I cut three pieces longer than the side that I need. Just a dot of hot glue up here in the corner. And then same thing, we're just going to wrap it holding one straight and just wrapping the other two around until we get all the way to the bottom. So technically that piece that you're holding um, doesn't need to be as long as the other two, but I just cut them all longer just to make it easier. And again, we're just gonna secure it in the corner with hot glue, trying not to leave too much length on there. I don't want it like overlapping too much there um, because I'm gonna do the top and the bottom as well. The reason I know how to do this is because I was trying to make like a larger rope out of Dollar Tree rope and that's how they had us kind of braid it. Um, it works well on a project like this where you're gluing down both ends. Otherwise, I don't know how well it would work. <laughs> but a fun little trick if you need your twine to be thicker. So again, I just twisted it, hot glued it here in the corner, just trying to cut off any twine that might be sticking out. And this DIY was really easy to put together. They have the starfish in other colors. They have it in white. That would look really cute as well. They also have it like in red, um, blue, like a more of a royal blue. So you could do it in different colors as well. And if you don't like the color that you found at Dollar Tree, since the shore living items are going so fast, you could always paint them. They paint really well as well. But be, for, be sure to check out these frames. I really, really like them. So just finishing up the fourth rope here, cutting that off, gluing it, making sure everything's trimmed up. And basically that's all there is to it. I'm just gonna use the canvas itself to hang it on the wall. I like that it's burlap and you can see through it. It looks very coastal. But again, if you want yours to be standing up, you could always glue the cardboard frame to the back. But this is how mine looks hanging. Very coastal. I'm glad that I chose the blue starfish. I think that's really pretty. And our little DIY rope there on the sides is cute as well. So the first project was intricate, so I thought I would give you an easy one for the second. But I like it. Now for the next one. I wanted to see what I can make with these new, like, um, what are they called? Wall decor um, and the yard stakes. I wanted something to look like coral, and I found these in the crafter square section. They're not necessarily coral, but I think I can make them look like coral. And I thought I would do a wall hanging with the seahorse in front of the coral and make it look really pretty. The color that I'm going to use for the coral is this. It's the smooth sea glass. It's by Mondo Llama from Target. I thought it was really pretty. Um, I wanted to use like a blue that was not too far away from the blue on the seahorse, um, but um, something kind of a little bit of a contrast. I thought this was really pretty. And so I'm just gonna do one coat of that on it to kind of make it look like a coral backdrop for our seahorse. I don't want like um, great coverage, just one coat over. I will distress this a little bit more, but this actually worked out really well. I loved it so much that we're gonna make a different version of it as well. Now to get the seahorse off the yard stake, I'm gonna leave it attached to the tail. I'm just gonna break it off here, um, right there where I just don't damage any of it. I just wanna break it off so it's not visible. With pliers, that's a really easy way to do that. It's a beautiful color blue on this, but again, it's kind of distressed with like a rust where I kind of want mine distressed with more of an ivory. And so I'm just gonna distress mine, kind of running a brush over. 
um, trying to get that texture brought out in the seahorse, but just a very, you know, um, ivory kind of distress instead of the rust look that was on there before. And just kind of going all over, using a paper towel to kind of blend it in if I get too heavy in an area, and just making sure that it's not bent or anything and it lays flat. I thought that looked really good, so I'm going to do this same thing here on the coral. Just kind of um, dabbing my Distress brush all over, just giving little dots of Distress here and there. Nothing crazy, just a little bit of variety in the color. And I thought it would look really cute to attach the seahorse just like that. But I know that hot glue and metal doesn't often mix, so I'm going to try to figure out another way to attach it because I want to make sure it's sturdy. Since it's kind of got a little bit of depth to it, I'm going to use some double-sided tape from Dollar Tree. And I actually use these little, the little foam squares, and they're not quite thick enough. So what I'm going to do is double them up. That's going to be like a quick hold to kind of hold it in place while the rest of the glue dries. So hopefully the combination of the two will help it. I kind of want to sit it there, so I'm kind of seeing where I need to put my glue. And the glue I'm going to use is E6000. You could also use like super glue. Um, epoxy, whatever you can find. But just remember, hot glue is not going to last really very long. So I put some on its snout, on its tail, and maybe here on the wire where that kind of sticks up a little bit. And we're just going to glue it in place. And the combination um, seemed to have worked because the foam really kept it in place, kind of like hot glue for like a temporary hold, which I know that's not super strong. So hopefully the E6000 will make it nice and permanent. You can flip it over and actually kind of go through like the holes here in the back, depending on which one of these little pieces that you pick up for your coral. And I'm actually just going to kind of go in the holes, the leaves, just to kind of glue it down some more and let that set up. But doesn't it look so pretty so far? Now for the top, I'm going to use one of these little wall charms. Um, this one is the starfish one, and I thought it'd be pretty to have the starfish here at the top. It has a beautiful texture. It's white. I'm going to leave mine as is, and I'm lining up the hole in the starfish with the hole in my coral. So I'm going to hot glue that in place, try to line that up before it dries, and that way I can put the hanger through both. And I think hot glue will work fine on that. It's not made out of metal. It's more of like, um, it feels kind of like ceramic, but I think it's probably made out of resin. For the hanger, I'm using that blue twine from the Shore Living line, since I have a little bit of blue going on in the project, and just tying a simple hanger there for the top. It was really easy to put this together, and I think it turned out really beautiful. What do you guys think about this little seahorse and coral with a beautiful starfish on top. I love it. I'm so glad I found this seahorse yard stakes this year. I'm never that lucky. You can see the beautiful texture on that starfish. Love it. Haven't seen those in my store, but I ordered a case of them online from dollartree.com and I love them so much I ordered a second case. And I still haven't seen them in my stores, but my stores have been telling me they don't have everything yet, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> But I thought it turned out so great that I wanted to make a second one. So for the second one, I'm going to choose this wall decor piece. Um, it's a little bit different than the first one, but I thought it still could be coral. Very pretty. And um, another one of the yard stakes, I found this sea turtle one too. I was so excited. I've never found that. And then another one of these wall decor pieces. This time we're going to use the seashell one. Again, it has a beautiful texture. And the colors on this one will be a little different, but I want it to um, kind of complement the first one so I can kind of hang them together as a set. So I kind of want like the sea turtle like that swimming in front. Again, I'm just using a pair of pliers to try to break that wire off um, just, to, just where I need it to be, not enough to completely remove it because I don't want to damage that adorable sea turtle. Now, the color I chose on this one... Um, I think this was kind of like a lake blue. I ended up changing it a little bit because it really wasn't the shade of blue that I was looking for. But I'm going to go ahead and paint this one all over just with a sponge brush. As you can see, super easy to paint these. 
And they had these in like all different varieties in um, the Crafter Square at my Dollar Tree. But I think they definitely remind me of corals. So I think they work great for coastal crafting. Now for the sea turtle, I don't want it to be that color. So to get it all painted evenly, and since it's metal, I thought it would be easiest just to spray paint it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have some spray paint that is like a sea glass color um, Rust-Oleum. So I'm just gonna put like a wood block underneath of them to lift them up a little bit. This is, oh, I guess it's not Rust-Oleum, it's Krylon. <laughs> and I'm just gonna spray him this color of blue. Be a nice base coat. I'm gonna distress him and stuff, but that was a quick way to kind of change the shade of blue of him. And it seemed to work out really well. You can see how the metal is all stamped. So you're still gonna get all that great texture and everything um, to be able to kind of customize that a little bit further. So that looks pretty good. Now I decided to change the color of my coral. I decided to go back with that same um, sea glass color that we used before and kind of make them match a little bit. Mixing the two blues together did make it a slightly different color of blue, but I'm okay with that. I think it looks really pretty. I just wanted something um, close, kind of complimentary. Uh, the sea turtle is a little darker, but we're going to distress that. So that will lighten it up a little bit. So just kind of slightly changing the color on this one, just because I didn't really like the color that I chose at first. And the little like um, buds on these definitely reminds me of some kind of coral or something that you would find under the sea. Just trying to get it all even. And then we can start distressing some of the pieces so we can put this together. For the sea turtle, I'm gonna use this color to kind of distress it. Um, I think this is the Caribbean blue. And I'm just gonna kind of dab all over with my um, chunky brush from Dollar Tree, trying to give a very light distress, bring in like a softer color of blue to this. And I'm gonna go all over the shells. I already did the head the flippers, just giving it a very light distress, just trying to bring more character in it and make it not like all one color like it was after I spray painted it. Then we're gonna go in with antique parchment again, um, kind of an ivory color, and we're gonna distress everything just like we did before, just kind of like dotting that on the coral. Anytime I can make something like, you know, a a few different shades of colors. It's going to give it more depth, um, just give it a lot more character. And so I just kind of do that, kind of blending it in a little bit here, just with a dry paper towel. And then I'm going to use that same ivory color to distress my turtle as well. Just kind of distressing it the same way I did with the blue. Just going to provide a little bit more color and details to this little guy until I'm happy with them. I just didn't like the shade of blue that it was before. It didn't really go with what I was trying to do. And I'm thinking it's looking pretty cute. Now I wanted to kind of get in between like the little scoots here on its shell. So I kind of switched it up to a smaller paintbrush and I'm just, just kind of distressing those a little bit with the ivory as well, just for a little bit more definition. This is just me probably being a little bit extra, but I really do like how he turned out. I have never, I don't know if they've had the sea turtle one before. I know I've never found them. So I was really excited to find them at my Dollar Tree the other day. So I'm gonna attach him the same way that I did the seahorse that seemed to work well. The double-sided foam tape from the Dollar Tree doubled up to make it thick enough. And we're gonna place a couple of those like inside the turtle shell where I think it's gonna kind of match up with the coral like that. And then we can use E6000 to glue the metal to it. I've tried um, using these metal yardstakes from the Shore Living line with hot glue on projects and I found that they stuck, but not for long and I don't want this falling apart. So I glued that down Again, I have access to the back, so you can go in there and add more glue and stuff if you need to um, and get everything just right. Um, 
I think that looks pretty good like that. Now it's time to add the seashell. I chose something different than the starfish for a little bit of variety, but again, it has a hole on the top that I can align with the hole and our faux coral. And so I'm gonna do that again, um, just by gluing that in place and putting the hanger through that. So kind of having it go off to the left this side because I had the starfish kind of go off to the right in the seahorse DIY. And I wanna be able to kind of hang these together as a set. Again, using that blue twine from the Shore Living to make a simple hanger. And this one turned out so cute as well. Let me give you a little close up view of this one. And then I'm gonna show you what they look like together. They look so cute hanging together as a set. So I'm so glad that I made two. You can see all the colors come together on that turtle looks super cute and our faux coral looks cute as well i really love those little wall charm things they're really neat and i told you i would show you what they look like hanging together and this is what they look like hanging together in my house i love that there's like different items at the top different corals different sea creatures really beautiful set definitely doesn't look like you bought the items at the dollar tree isn't that so cute I thought that was really fun. Very easy to make, but turned out beautiful. Now for the next DIY, we're gonna use one of the new shell signs from the Dollar Tree, but I'm not really gonna use that side with the fancy stuff on it. I'm gonna just flip mine over. So if you have one from last year, that will work. And we're gonna make a seashell covered seashell. <laughs> so I'm gonna use these new seashells from the Dollar Tree. They're made out of plastic, which kind of threw me off at first, but then I was like, you know, those would be great for crafting. They're all gonna be like shaped perfectly and they won't break. So they even have great colors as you can see. It's just trying to figure out a strategy, how I can kind of overlap these to cover this to make it look really good. And I wasn't sure since they were plastic, how well they would hold up to hot glue because I have really hot glue with that Ryobi hot glue gun and they seem to hold up just fine. So I'm gonna start at the very top of mine. At first I was gonna kind of like glue them like this, trying to fill out the top of the scallop shell, but it got a little complicated trying to get it just right. So I do develop a better strategy, but this is kind of getting me started here. That way I can kind of like overlap um, by putting some glue on the bottom of those there at the top, they're going to kind of all hang over. Um, otherwise, I'm going to put hot glue on the bottom and the top part. This was me trying to kind of figure out how this was going to work. But then I decided that it would probably be easier just to do rows. So I'm going to start with that middle row that I've already started. So I'm going to hot glue it to the wood sign, but I'm also hot gluing it to the shell that I'm overlapping to just a little bit. And I'm gonna continue that down. So as you can see, they are great for crafting. I think that the variety and color kind of gives them more of a realistic feel. They are plastic, which gives them a little bit of a plastic shine, but I'll show you what I did to kind of solve that on mine to try to make them look more realistic but I'm just going all the way down to the bottom there with my first row to cover the seashell with seashells. And I have another seashell plan for this DIY as well. I thought they would all work together really well. So I'm doing my second row. As you can see, I'm kind of alternating that a little bit so that the one next to it will kind of fit in it, kind of like a glove, putting a hot glue on the top and the bottom, overlapping the one next to it, um, or under it and then kind of to the one to the side like that and going all the way down here I will worry about covering the little areas of the sign that aren't covered once I get all of my seashells on there so I'm gonna do a row on the other side same thing just hot gluing these super easy takes a little bit of time to do this because it is a larger sign but I really love how it turned out it was definitely a work of art I have a total of three packages and I used about two and a half, not maybe two and a quarter of the bags. So they do have quite a few in there. 
And I do like them better than, like, the broken ones that they had before, like the real ones that have, like, particles and stuff all over them. They're nice and um, perfect and clean. <laughs> so I thought they worked really great for this. And I've been wanting to try them on something. So I'm just going to go as far down there on the bottom as I can with that row. And then here it was a little tricky. I kind of needed like a half a piece. And I couldn't figure out how to get that to work. And then I decided um, I would just kind of make it go up a little bit further like that. But then I thought that kind of stuck out too far. So my solution was to kind of turn the top one sideways to make it shorter. And it actually worked out pretty well like that. So I did one sideways there at the top. It's going to kind of give me a half of a seashell shape without it sticking out too much. And then just continuing my same row pattern going down with all these adorable little seashells. Now, one thing that I end up doing on this project is adding a rope border around it to really play up that um, shell shape and to kind of frame it out. I wish that I would have kind of attached that to the wooden sign first because when I got over here to the edges, it would have given me something else to glue this shell to, um, especially when they're kind of hanging off the edges like that. But I didn't know at this point I was gonna frame it out but I thought it needed it after I had all of the shells attached. So same thing, just finishing it off row by row. And as you can see, these things are definitely easy to craft with. I know several of you have found these as well at your stores. I was really surprised and I thought it was really funny when the cashier tried to wrap them up like fragile items and I was like, those are plastic. <laughs> they were like, no way. I'm like, I know I've never seen them before either. So on that row, I did um, put one sideways at the top like I did on the other side to make that fit a little bit better. And then just doing a couple here, kind of almost hanging off the side, kind of gluing them at an angle to cover up that side of the seashell. Down here at the bottom where I had some loose pieces I'm going to go through, try to cover those up as well. Sometimes I can only hot glue like the top of this shell. Um, to kind of get that attached so no bottom and as you can see those two packages almost made it but I did need a few more I guess here from the last package to get all of the wood covered up with seashells I have one little space over here so I'm going to put one more there so that's what it looks like so far I thought you couldn't necessarily tell it was a shell shape very well so we're going to kind of outline it with Dollar Tree rope. This is like um, some of the thicker rope. I wish it was even thicker. I end up doubling it up to make it like a more substantial frame for this. But for the first row, I'm just going to kind of start behind some of the seashells just to kind of hide that loose end right there. thought that'd be a good place to start and hide it. So I'm just going to do a bead of hot glue on this side of the wood sign and start that right there. This is about the same size as the shell sign was last year. If you've got one of those left over in your stash, the one that had like the little, I think it was starfish on it. But these are new this year and I like them. I just didn't really need that wood detail on it because I knew I wanted to cover my seashell with shells. So gluing um, to the side is really easy. Up here it gets a little bit trickier because I want to get that shape of the seashell. So I want to get it kind of down in all the ridges kind of with a thicker rope. So before my hot glue sets up, I try to kind of force it into those little corners to try to make it bend and make little round edges come out. I'm using like the Cricut weeder to kind of like force it down in there a little bit. I'm just going to leave the hanger that's on it. So I'm just trying to avoid that. I do end up having to take the wood beads off of it because I just didn't have enough room after we did a double of the rope border. The reason that I go around it twice is because as you can see, some of the seashells are really sticking out a lot and you really wouldn't be able to see the rope border um, because it's kind of hidden by the seashells. So I'm going to go around it here the first time 
And then we're gonna go back around it again to make even wider rope frame. And I'm really glad I added this. I think it really added a lot to the piece. So almost around, again, just trying to get all of those turns and hot glue the end. I did stop and then we're gonna start again with a second row. Um, that's what it looks like with one row. As you can see, it's still not super obvious, um, the shape with the border. So I had enough rope on that package to go around it again. And so that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna start at the bottom again and just hot glue the rope to itself um, to give me a wider rope border. And I was much happier with it the way it looked like that. So um, again, just gluing the rope to itself. And I'm kind of putting it underneath the seashells, as you can see there, um, that kind of overlap. And that made a much better border because now you can kind of see it all the way around. Again, the wood beads were a little too much. I left the same hanger on there, but I took them off just because there wasn't going to be enough room for them anymore. Otherwise, I thought they were cute. I was going to leave them on there. And just working my way around here towards the bottom. Now we're almost done with this piece. I think it's looking really cute, but I thought it needed something. I didn't really like like the plastic look of the shells that much. Um, I thought I wanted them to have like a little bit more of a matte finish. And so I'll show you how I'm going to do that. First, we're going to burn off all the fuzzies here on the rope, just with a lighter, just to clean it up a little bit. It wasn't too hairy, but I always like to do that. I think it just makes it look more finished. Now to give it that matte finish, I'm just going to use matte Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree. Super easy way to kind of trick those shells, make them look a little bit less shiny little bit more realistic. I do love the colors on them. I think that variety really works well, especially for plastic. And so I just go over the whole thing with that, with one coat of the matte Mod Podge. And that did take a lot of that plastic sheen off, which I don't really like that that much. And almost done. I just think it needs one more thing. We're going to use one of these wall charms from the Dollar Tree. That's also shaped like a seashell. So I'm just going to use some pliers and take the twine and wood beads off the back. I like the color. I like that it's a, um, a little bit different color than the seashells with the white and it's distressed. I did a bead of hot glue all the way around and we're just going to glue that seashell like right in the center of our seashell covered seashell. So I think that really kind of ties everything together. Really fun project to do. It is definitely a little bit time consuming just because you have to glue all the seashells in place, but look how beautiful it turned out. So much character. I really love it. Um, really fun DIY. I would highly recommend and I really love those wood charms like that. They're so pretty, aren't they? Right there on the front. I wanted to take a quick break to let you know about memberships. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos. All you have to do is hit that join button under today's video and you're free to cancel any time. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, the next DIY. I love these little glass bottles from the Shore Living Line, but I never really know what to do with them because I don't really have any liquids to put in them. So I wanted to see if I could make it more into a decor piece. I also got one of these bottles from the Dollar Tree that has like the lights inside with the little cork. And I thought I could take maybe that lighted cork and reuse it in that beautiful blue glass bottle from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. I do still want to use that cool shell shape at the top if I can figure out exactly how to do it, it's gonna be a little too tall if I leave um, the cork that was already on there on there. So I'm gonna try to figure this out. I start by kind of just cutting off that rubber uh, seal from the cork to see what order we're working with. And it's just like a plastic piece. So I think I should be able to cut that off um, to reuse that on the top if I wanted to, because that's one of my favorite things about the bottle. But at the same time, I want my bottle to light up. So I wanted to use one of these light quirks. These things are really cool. They have like the little LED lights on them. 
just a wire. So I'm just untangling that so we can fill that blue bottle up. I thought that blue bottle with that texture would look just so pretty um, lit up with these. So we're going to try it out, put these inside, and the cork is made out of like kind of a caramel colored plastic. It's not super pretty, the cork, um, because it doesn't really look like wood, and it's got like little symbols and stuff on the front of it with like a little battery pack on the back. It's still like the smallest battery pack for these that I've seen to light up a bottle like these, so I like the idea of it being a cork. They kind of give it more of a wood look. I'm going to just, just distress it with like this um, Beachcomber Beige color by Apple Barrel and just in one direction just to kind of give it a wood grain. Just a little something to make it look better because I'm not a huge fan of how it looks. I'm also going to do that here on the top. And I want to still be able to use that shell part as well. So we're going to try to make this work. I am just putting my lights right back down in here into the bottle, trying to figure out the like most even way <laughs> to get the lights in there. I thought if I like folded them in thirds, that way I would get just as many lights at the top as I have in the middle and at the bottom. And that seemed to work really well. The cork fits in there nicely. It might be a little large, but I want to kind of disguise it with that shell that I cut off from the rest of the cork just using my saw. It was actually pretty easy to cut. That way it can kind of just kind of disguise the cork there. I just attach it with a little bit of hot glue to the lip of the bottle. I get the best of both worlds. Now I get the lights. I get that beautiful shell on the top. The blue color um, looks so great lit up. And just a fun way to DIY these shore living bottles. I thought it needed a little bit more. So I'm going to take some of that blue twine from the shore living line. And I want to cover like um, the top of the bottle with that. So I just tied that off and we're just going to wrap that around to kind of cover most of the bottle there at the top. So I just kind of glue down one end and then just use the, the twine to wrap it around it until I'm happy with it. I also want to kind of dangle that down, maybe add a few seashells to it as well. But I just wanted to add a little bit more texture by adding the twine to it with the combination of the glass. I thought that looked pretty. So for the pieces hanging down, I'm actually going to tie that on separately. So I just glued that off. I'm going to burn off any fuzzies on that, kind of get it ready. And then um, I'm going to use some of the little tiny seashells from the Dollar Tree to hang there on the front of them. These come in the little glass bottles. Been having trouble finding these the last couple months at my store, so hopefully they get them back in stock. I really love them. I'm just going to choose two different seashells. It doesn't really matter. Just kind of on the same kind of scale that I can kind of like dangle down in front of the bottle like that. So I'm just going to cut off another piece of that twine. And we're going to tie a knot here on the front. And we can simply attach the seashells with hot glue kind of dangling down the front. Just a fun, another little fun decorative piece to add to these. And I was so glad that I did this project because I always buy these bottles. Sometimes I set them around. I never really know what to do with them because uh, I don't really have anything to put in them. So lighting them up and using them for decoration worked really well. Now I wrapped that twine around and under so it would hang down kind of properly next to the other one. And then I adding, I'm adding a seashell to that one too. I want to make like this one a little bit shorter. So they kind of hang like staggered like that. So I just hot glue that to the back of the seashell as well. And this is how it turned out. Let me show you how beautiful this is, especially all lit up. This isn't even like at night, but it still looks beautiful. You can see it leaves like a beautiful, like kind of dotted pattern everywhere around it when it's lit up from that beautiful texture of the short living bottle. So I kind of wish they came with lights already. Isn't that so pretty? But using a couple items from the Dollar Tree, I was able to make it work. Now for the next DIY, we're going to use a sea turtle glass sign. These are new this year from the Shore Living line. 
I used the seahorse ones in a previous video to make a lantern and they turned out so cute. So I wanted to see if I could kind of use this as more of a sign, but give it some character. The first thing I do is just remove the twine from the top because I want this to be a standing sign. I like the fact that the sea turtle is on glass. I think that's super cute, but I don't really appreciate the white plastic frame. So we're going to add some color to that. And I'm just going to use some craft wood from the Dollar Tree. I had a scrap piece that's just the right length. And that's going to be a great base for the sign. Since it is a glassy turtle, you could always put like a candle or something behind this. It would be really pretty. I'm just going to make a simple kind of see-through sign. Now painting the plastic frame is a little bit challenging. I'm going to start here. Um, I'm just using Caribbean blue and I'm just using a sponge and just lightly dragging that on the plastic. Another option you could do is to like Mod Podge at first because you really just need something for the acrylic paint to stick to. And the plastic, it doesn't really want to stick to, as you can see. It's just looking like a very light blue distress, but that's okay. If we do several layers, um, we can finally get that blue. I wanted to add definitely some more color to that. So I just did a very thin coat, dried it, and then I just keep going over it with more thin coats until I get it bluer and bluer. And I'm so glad that I added the color to it. I think it made it look a lot better because the frame itself is eh, not the greatest. I think the glass is too big to fit in another frame though, because I did think about that. But I thought we could try to make it work. I'm going to use that same Caribbean blue color here. Um, I think that's Caribbean blue by Delta and paint um, the top and the sides of that scrap wood piece because I want to try to make it match the frame as much as I can. So that's what the frame looks like with two coats. It's still not super blue, so I'm going to go over it here with a third coat. And I'm doing all four sides, but I'm only doing like the edges, the top, and the two sides. Cause I don't really want to put any paint on the bottom. I'm going to use that area to attach it to this sign. And so um, I went over the base with another coat of that Caribbean blue as well to bring out the color. And I thought it still wasn't quite as blue as I wanted. So I think this is like a fourth coat. So be prepared if you're going to paint the plastic frame. It is going to take quite a few coats. If you don't use Mod Podge, I probably should have. But I think that looks good. It's definitely as blue as I'd like, and it's starting to match the wood, the actual wood that we painted blue. I want them to coordinate with each other. Now for the base, I wanted to give a little bit of texture to the sides because they are not great. And then I remembered I did not paint the back of it, so I'm going to paint the back of it as well. Um, that way I can wrap some of that burlap trim all the way around it. This is the one that I'm going to hot glue on. It is like the wavy um, burlap trim kind of reminded me of ocean waves and i'm just going to go all the way around the base all four sides just hot gluing that on it's going to give it a little bit of character and texture and the sides are not made out of great wood so that kind of helps make it look better now it's just a matter of putting this together they're almost exactly the same size i just do a bead of hot glue along the bottom of the frame and then just sit it here on my base to make a standing sign. I've been looking for lots of ways to DIY with these because I bought a whole case of them. I think they're really pretty, but here it is, my sea turtle one. We made it into a standing sign. Again, it would look pretty with light behind it, but it kind of looks pretty on its own. I think these would look really nice too if you had a window or a little area to hang them to get some outdoor light through them as well. But it was definitely a quick, easy little DIY. And I just love how he turned out. Okay, you've made it all the way to the final reveal of all 21 of the Dollar Tree Shore Living DIYs I've made this year. Um, be sure to hit uh, the like button if you enjoyed this video. Comment your favorite beachy DIY below, and if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. Enjoy!
for better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. Hold on tight, I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just hold on tight. This vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn.
better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. Hold on tight, I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just hold on tight. This vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn. making it all the way to the end of today's video i really appreciate it your watch time really does matter and i also want to give a huge thank you to all of my crafty beach bumps for supporting my channel thank you to karen o'haran melinda elizabeth jamie job susan edmonds carrie r tracy knight nancy wunner julie miller janae farrington pamelia wren maria grace donna shiner Sandy C and Lindsay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Now, if you'd like to watch more Dollar Tree Shore Living DIYs, I've got you covered. Check out this video right here. Until next time, happy crafting.